fire spirit of the living God tonight I will only attempt only attempt only attempt by your grace and mercy to help your people know you what pride to try to teach men about you who can who has the experience who has the experience who has the power and the wisdom by what standard but we beckon on your grace because we are partners on the strength of intimacy we pray oh god that the communication of our faith tonight will be effectual let it edify your body lord i pray that i will teach with accuracy let your people understand you help us tonight oh god in the name of jesus i just want you to sit down quietly and just carry something to write be very sensitive tonight and the spirit of the lord told me that he wants this message to spread like fire to the body there are not many messages where the lord speaks to me about it this message will create an effect in ministries in lives see no matter what you think you know about the holy spirit just drop it aside and listen the maker of men the maker of men the maker of men the holy spirit zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 give us wisdom the holy spirit demons will cry out tonight i tell you i tell you yokes will be broken tonight is another miracle service just the teaching you dare not call him the holy spirit is not just a force as you will be learning when you learn his presence you will see how cheap satan is presence an unfakeable reality you can't fake it no mimicking if it is not him then it is not him it's as simple as that zechariah chapter 4 we're going to read two scriptures tonight as we begin zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 inside outside online if you can follow one two read then he answered and spake unto me saying aha uh -huh, this is the word of the lord to zerubbabel saying not by might not by power but by my spirit so he shows you the key he's revealing something to zerubbabel don't waste your time this thing is not by might is not by power but is by my spirit second scripture very quickly second corinthians 13 verse 14 let's read it everyone it's projected one to read the grace of our lord jesus christ uh-huh and the communion of the holy ghost if you can have it in amplified that would be great the grace of our lord jesus christ just keep the scripture there the love of god and the communion it says the grace favor and spiritual blessing of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the presence and fellowship listen the communion and sharing together and participation of the holy ghost these three mysteries should be with you the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god you have these two alone you will fail in life and the communion of the holy spirit so let's take down the course content we're going to consider the concept of the trinity very quickly just some little theological housekeeping the concept of the trinity and then the person of the holy spirit the next thing we're going to consider is the person of the holy spirit we're going to be examining who the holy spirit is 
then number three the ministry of the Holy Spirit the ministry of the Holy Spirit the ministry of the Holy Spirit then number four the ministry of the Spirit the ministry of the Spirit it's not the same thing I said the third thing is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and then the fourth thing is the ministry of the Spirit the Bible says he has made us able ministers of the Spirit the ministry of the Spirit hallelujah wherever we stop tonight we'll stop and then we'll take now let's start with the concept of the Trinity I want to give us some theological background so that we will really have that understanding look up please theologically speaking there are certain words that we use in the body of Christ but you will not find direct reference to them in the Bible there are certain words that are of common usage among the body of Christ and uh, I hope you know theologically speaking that Christianity what we call the faith life was an extension it came as a branching out from Judaism are we together Judaism is a practice that is hinged in the revelation of the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob that's where the journey so the Jews from where there is also a branching out of Islam a branching out of Judaism today and certain different branches you notice that most of these religions from the story of Abraham they agree then as you branch different kinds of confusion and misunderstanding starts so there are certain words that we use in the body of Christ but they are not directly referenced in scripture one of those words is the word rapture we use it to mean a system where believers are transisted out of this realm you know there are references like that but you do not find a single word rapture in the Bible there is no mention of the word rapture now when you study systematic theology is a system where you are able to use scriptures and draw meanings it is the basis for establishing doctrines it is the basis for explaining scripture according to systematic theology scripture must explain scripture are we together now for any teaching to become a doctrine the theological condition is that number one that thought that line of thought must be referenced in the old testament that's the first condition condition number two jesus who is the bridge between the old and the new must communicate that thought too in his earth work and then number three it must be referenced in the life of the early church any thought that is referenced in the old testament testified by jesus himself and experienced by the early church um, fulfills the condition to be a doctrine so you you can use one scripture to buttress on a point but that scripture isolated in its own cannot form a doctrine are we together now yeah so there are many scriptures although the word rapture is not mentioned there are many scriptures from the Old Testament Jesus himself testified of a possibility that a time will come when he can take people to where he is in john 14 remember i go to prepare a place when i prepare the place i will come and take you so that where i am there you may be also and then paul in his pauline epistles began to open to the church the possibility of a mass exodus that he was using that scripture to comfort bereaved people and he said that they should not weep like those who do not have hope for a time will come there will be a trumpet that will be blasted and they who are dead in Christ will arise first is that true and we who are alive will be caught up that experience of being caught up is what was coined that we call rapture 
so you cannot say rapture is not a doctrine or it's not in the bible in fact is one of the seven tenets what we call the tenets of the christian faith i will teach you in a separate series there are seven tenets like pillars of the christian faith if you are a christian there are seven major truths you must believe number one you must be don't write it i'm just giving you a teaser number one you must believe in the mystery of the incarnation god becoming a man the bible calls it the mystery of godliness you can't just believe in a savior just like that the first thing you must believe is that there is a supreme god in heaven are we together now and then you believe in the incarnation you believe in the virgin birth you must believe in the earth walk and the sinlessness of jesus you must believe in the fact that he died and died on the cross if you believe jesus died in a motor accident you are not a christian there he, he must that cross must be there are we together you must believe that when he died he didn't go to heaven he went to hell because that's where sinners go to really hades the place of departed spirits and gehenna the place of the dead there was a transaction that happened there you must believe he rose up after three days not one week you must believe that he appeared to many in the streets of jerusalem you must believe he ascended to heaven according to hebrews offered his blood upon the tabernacle of heaven then you must believe in his return if you do not believe these things you are not a christian it's as simple as that no matter your denomination this is the id card of christians these seven things another series will explain them another word i'm still giving an introduction to the concept of the trinity another word is trinity you never find the word trinity mentioned in scripture there is no reference theologically speaking from genesis to revelation where in these 66 books you hear the word trinity are we together now so i want to establish it because when we are talking about the holy spirit there are many denominations today sadly who do not believe he's a person who do not even believe in his existence there are many christian sects who have all kinds of debates and all of that so before i begin to talk about this most precious personality i must establish from the word of god is there such a doctrine as the doctrine of the trinity the triune nature of god three persons coexisting in one is it biblical and is it true so what is the proof of the triune nature of god the first evidence i'll give you a few scriptures and i want us to hurry up because you will need this to be the foundation of your confidence as we learn about god and then the holy spirit media you will help us we need a lot of speed genesis chapter 1 we'll look at verse 1 to 3 then we'll go to 26. the first reference of the possibility of the existence of god manifested as more than one person genesis chapter 1 he says in the beginning god now i want you to know that the old testament was written in hebrew a uh, part of latin was also added to it but largely hebrew and then the new testament was written largely in greek and aramaic are we together now so the expressions um when you read them from the greek context greek and um, hebrew sorry is a very rich communication it can break words one word can have several meanings based on whatever context this is what was referenced here english calls god god but in the hebrew it can tell you whether it is plural or singular so the bible says in the beginning god the word god there in the hebrew is elohim and elohim is always in plural the singular is eloha one of the parties so we see here that the bible is referencing based on the hebrew manuals that this personality is not just an individual god created the heavens and the earth then verse 2 and the earth was formed was without form void and darkness was upon the face of the deep the hebrew rendition of darkness and voidness is tohu wa bohu it is darkness and confusion the same word that is referenced in 
Isaiah chapter 60 arise shine for your light has come behold darkness and gross darkness the same word is used here I'm just giving you some theological foundation and then the Bible says and the Spirit of God now take note the first single personality of the Trinity revealed from Scripture is not the Father not the word who we now call the son jesus yeshua but the spirit of god are we together now he says and the spirit of god moved round the face of the water so we see one manifestation of the trinity verse 3 and god said elohim 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 let there be really the the context here is actually eloha but i'm saying god at work Elohim because he is speaking are we together it didn't just say God appear are we together but God spoke the word so we see the word we see God we see the spirit are we together now then in verse 26 it says an Elohim the same word is used again said let us let us a classic confirmation it didn't say let me and elohim a discussion in heaven going on let us now maybe i should tell you that the original names of god or the titles god was never called father the concept of god uh being called father was a revelation that jesus brought are we together now yes the word father means abba comes from the greek word it means your source and sustainer but father like a procreator a progenitor of a personality was never used in the old testament for god are we together they understood fatherhood but not referenced to god they knew him as the almighty god they encountered him but that knowledge as father his original name as revealed to the people was el shaddai el shaddai el shaddai the deity that is limited the expression there is the multi-breasted one like a mother breast feeds her child now he has such abundance of supply it's an attempt to explain his limitless dimension and then jesus according to revelations 19 his name was never known and called jesus except even by prophecy it was emmanuel are we together it was a name that was given by the angel to mary that they would call him in his earth work his original name john 1 1 revelations 19 was and will always be the word and then the spirit of god now the bible uses a very interesting word he never really began to express him as the holy spirit notice that he called him the spirit of god um are you following me when you call him holy spirit you are right but classically speaking you are wrong because god is a spirit and he is holy jesus is a spirit although he ascended with a body he is holy are we together the holy spirit as a person is a spirit and he is holy you as a person you are a spirit and you are holy so if i call you holy spirit is still not is still theologically correct so we just call him holy spirit because of the unique reference to him but it is rather an attempt to describe him the name the standard name that the bible calls him is the spirit of god no man knows what is in the heart of a man save the spirit of that man the spirit of god i will use the word holy spirit for it for us but i just i'm giving us a background so we see in genesis 1 26 let us make the trinity the next reference very quickly at the baptism of jesus in matthew chapter 3 from verse 14 to 17 matthew chapter 3 from verse 14 to 17 please give it to us but john forbade him this is the baptism of jesus look up everyone john is baptizing people now and then all of a sudden jesus shows up behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world jesus is coming to be baptized and then john you know he said no 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 i also need this baptism and then why will you come to me 15 
Jesus said, suffer it to be so that scriptures will be all righteousness will be fulfilled and then he permitted him verse 16 and jesus when he was baptized so we see jesus god in the flesh the son of god by reason of their office the second person of the trinity then the bible says when he came out of the water lo the heavens were open and what do you see there the spirit of god another personality jesus is in the earth the heavens are open we see another personality descending in the similitude of a dove then the bible says descending like a dove and lighting upon him 17 and a voice so we see jesus on earth the holy spirit is coming upon him and a voice of another personality who is not the holy spirit and is not jesus speaking this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him and all of that so i'm showing you from scripture that the trinity the concept of the trinity is biblical two more proofs ready matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 this is jesus now teaching the disciples himself jesus himself is teaching the disciples matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 matthew 28 matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 matthew 28 matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 and jesus came and spake unto them saying everybody listen all power the word yes exousia is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 go ye therefore this is jesus teaching and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father in the name of and in the name of the holy ghost jesus himself acknowledged the fact that they were a trion reality in the in the realm of the spirit the godhead expressed in three personalities ready for one last proof acts chapter 7 verse 54 to 59 acts chapter 7 this was when stephen was about to be martyred the bible says something happened when they heard these things that stephen now the martyr the first recorded martyr when stephen was teaching them on these things the bible says they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth 55 we're reading to 59 but he being what so we see the holy ghost in stephen full of the holy ghost one of the personality of the trinity he said he looked up to heaven and what did he see the glory of god the similitude of the face of god another personality and what did he see again jesus standing at what so full of the holy ghost here on earth god in heaven and then the holy ghost at his right hand read on and he said behold i see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of god you can even stop there the point has been established so you see that from scripture old testament the gospels and the epistles i reveal to you that there is such a concept i know why i am for some of you this looks basic but many people who represent different sects some not even believers are going to be listening to this message and it's important that we start from a theological foundation so that it does not look like this is a pentecostal or charismatic phenomenon the concept of the trinity is established by the word of god there is such a concept now let me tell you a few things and i am very emotional as i say this the subject of the person and the ministry of the holy spirit in my opinion is the most misunderstood and most neglected teaching in the body of christ the subject of the revelation of the personality of the holy spirit i don't think that there is scarceness with the teaching of jesus as the son of god i don't think there is scarceness of the revelation of the father especially new testament believers we talk a lot about the fatherhood of god but the person and the ministry of the holy spirit most believers have almost no idea 
about the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, the church, especially the 21st century church, is not in ignorance as to the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit. We watch televisions every day and we see people falling from church to church. You come for koinonia and you see people shouting and flying all around. But the person, this entity, this personality called the Holy Spirit is what I want to introduce to us tonight. Who is the Holy Spirit? Who exactly is the Holy Spirit? We must know who He is. Why is He so important that Jesus had to need Him? Jesus walked upon the earth, never was able to do any serious kingdom thing until He came. Who is this personality so important that the saints of old, although they did not really know Him, but they could not resist his influence in their lives. When he came upon them, they could not articulate. They never had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. They could not know who he was. They only related to him based on his influence upon them. There were only two people in the Old Testament who communicated such an appreciable dimension of intimacy with him. Number one was Samuel the prophet. Number two was David the man after God's heart. These two personalities seem to have accessed deeper dimensions of their work with the Holy Spirit. A prophet that the Bible says his word did not fall to the ground. It was the psalmist that said, cast me not away from your presence. He said, take not your spirit from me. Who is the Holy Spirit? Now, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a bird. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. You have to believe this. The Holy Spirit is not candles with fire on it. The Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. The Holy Spirit is not water. The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not sound. All those things are similitudes of His operation. Similitudes of His operation. But not Him. The Holy Spirit is not an influence. He's bigger than an influence. Who is the Holy Spirit? Number one, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. He is not like God. He is not a friend of God. He is not a mentee of God. The Holy Spirit is God. Every description that you give the Father, every description in terms of honor and acknowledgement and power and might, it suffices to communicate the same description to the Holy Spirit. Now, the difference of the Trinity is not the power and the might, but the system of their functions and their offices. It is based on that that we now classify the Father as number one, the Son, Jesus, as number two, are we together? And the Holy Spirit as number three. The Holy Spirit is not junior God. The Holy Spirit is not the inferior part of God. He is God in every way, in every system, deserving of worship, deserving of honor, deserving of trust. So the Holy Spirit is God. Number two, the Holy Spirit represents the unlimited presence of Jesus. Benihin calls him Jesus unlimited. The Holy Spirit represents the unlimited presence of Jesus. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he was bound with a body. Listen, give us quickly please John John chapter John chapter 14 verse 16 to 18. John chapter 14 verse 16 to 18. The Holy Spirit a manifestation of the limitless presence of Jesus. So it is it is fair and scriptural to say the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited without bounds. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he could not be everywhere at the same time. 
it is the Holy Spirit that makes it possible for every believer to receive Christ. He is the representation of the presence of Jesus on earth and in the heart and life of every believer. And I will pray the Father, this is Jesus speaking, and He will give you another comforter. You've heard the word, the Greek rendition is Alos Parakletos. Alos and Heteros, these are words that mean one of the same kind or one of another kind. When you say Alos, it means the same in quality and species, like the cat family. Are we together? The bird family. When you say heteros, it can mean many birds, but not of the same. Maybe a dove and an eagle. They are not the same. So we have alos and we have heteros. Here it is alos parakletos. Another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Next verse. Next verse, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world listen jesus is saying the world cannot receive him why he says because it seeth him not so the first reason why the carnal man cannot walk with the holy spirit is why because he seeth him not now facebook and the social media has taught us that there is a possibility to relate with a personality you have never seen before facebook came they taught us something i think in secondary school or primary i don't know which one pen pal something that you write letter and post to another stranger who replies you but now with facebook you can communicate with a personality you do not even know and from his expression you can even know he's not happy yet you have never met him the person is in brazil you are in nigeria and you are communicating praying together growing together and you can even say how are you my good friend the world does not see him neither knoweth him an encounter not awareness the world cannot have an encounter with him because he is not the way you encounter physical men this is a spiritual encounter the two reasons why people cannot experience the person of the holy spirit don't forget this number one because they cannot see him except it is given to you by the grace of god you cannot see the person of the holy spirit with your optical eyes you can see the expressions of him you can feel the power of his presence you can see the influence the wind is in the similitude of the holy spirit you may not see the wind but you can see the paper it carries you can see the clothes it dries that's how the holy spirit is so you cannot you believe there is wind because you see it drying your clothes picking papers and occasionally dust can form a tornado and this is the effect of the wind but the wind is not a tornado the holy spirit represents the unlimited presence of jesus in the earth number three who is the holy spirit the holy spirit is the wisdom of god the holy spirit is not wise the holy spirit is the wisdom of god look at me of the trinity the holy spirit represents the wisdom of god you have to understand this the wisdom of god that's why jesus had to wait for him to come so that he will walk in wisdom the holy spirit is the wisdom of god number what number four the holy spirit is the revealer of the presence and the power of god not just the conveyor but the revealer only the holy spirit can make the presence of god and the power of god real to men listen without the holy spirit no matter what miracle you see it cannot change you i hope you know in the old testament they saw miracles yet they were not converted in the new testament they saw five thousand people fed by five loaves and two fish correct they saw the water turn into wine they saw jesus walking yet they still doubted him john the baptist himself who commissioned jesus in ministry doubted whether or not he was the messiah jesus resurrected 
and when he resurrected the bible says he went to his disciples he said but some doubted why because they had not received the holy spirit only the holy spirit can reveal the presence and the power of god to men see let me tell you something that's why there are people who can carry anointing they can sit in a meeting you can be dispensing the gifts of the spirit accurate prophecy you can see someone fall under the anointing and roll and get up and at the end of that meeting someone can be nodding and say bros are you there now i see we didn't attend the meeting powerful meeting with signs and wonders but without the presence of the holy spirit there is no conviction there is no change there is no transformation jesus sent the 70 are we together now jesus sent the 70 thomas was part of the 12 and the 70 thomas used the name of jesus casted devils but when jesus resurrected he said no way until he comes and i put my hand in his hand and then jesus came he said thomas do it he said blessed is he that has not seen blessed is he that has not seen but believe the conveyor the revealer of the presence of god who is the holy spirit let me give you a shocking definition number five the holy spirit is the author of scripture the holy spirit is the author of the bible the same way benihin is the author of good morning holy spirit the same way bishop oyedeko is the author of covenant wealth or a covenant of prosperity the holy spirit this book belongs to him it was not authored by zondervan it was not authored by um um white taker house this bible scripture was authored by the holy spirit you are a hypocrite if you try to read his book and ignore him the author of the bible is the holy ghost two scriptures second peter chapter 1 verse 21 and then second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 second peter chapter 1 verse 21 for the prophecy listen came not in old time by the will of man luke did not write the bible because he was intelligent listen john did not write the bible just because he leaned on the chest of jesus isaiah did not write the bible just because he had to write he said the will of man was too small to have written this bible look up there is no man that wrote the bible just by their will no it takes more than willingness to write this there must be a personality and an influence a compelling force 90 percent of the people who were used by the spirit to write the bible were not educated they were illiterate so how was the details of the character of god so captured with minimal error in spite of their personalities some of them never met themselves but see the synergy and the consistency of their communication no prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of god spake as they were what influenced the same word the holy ghost drove jesus to the wilderness so men wrote they spake and later documented it as moved by the holy ghost listen to me carefully i i may want to write one book now maybe translate some of my messages into books and i can tell the media department or we get a professional editor and say take one two three messages i need the transcripts of all of them and i sit down and edit it does it mean that is that person that wrote the book please respect him he is the author of this book men of god hold this book and they never know the author they preach it they write other books with reference to this and never give honor to the author they give honor to their wives thank you for motivating me on the computer while i type they give honor to their children thank you son for not being stubborn while i wrote the book and they ignore the owner listen 
there is something called plagiarism plagiarism is an offense correct when you take somebody's thought without due permission and without making reference how many people have plagiarized the spirit of god we use his words every time and every day and nobody has been arrested and we never give him credit if david Dam catches somebody recording his song and making money from it they will first share it into half and then take him to court and say no way it came from god but through me you are not going to just read from are you get if somebody carries the koinonia worship team song and just runs with it like that they'll sue the person to court yet 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 we take everything that is of the holy spirit he gave us unrestrained access to use it as though we wrote the book look at how i quote scriptures as if i was there i can quote it then i will be stupid to not acknowledge him the holy spirit is the author of the bible second timothy 3 16. second timothy 3 16. i want you to read one to read all scripture is given by what is the word breath is the word numa the greek is rock an expression a manifestation of this of the holy spirit all scripture how many all scripture all scripture not some not a major part all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect and all of that so the holy spirit is the author of the word write this down christianity is not a religion christianity is not one of the four thousand religions on earth that's quite an information you want to know i don't know what's the current maybe somebody has invented something from january till now now that recession is on somebody must have come up with something but the last time i checked there were at least four thousand religions on earth isn't it amazing four thousand plus with followers all with followers you can go and register it officially your religion state your tenets of faith prove that it works they give you a patent to to smuggle people from whatever religion into yours christianity is not a religion it has never been and will never be religion is man's attempt to manage his confusion about god religion is man's attempt to find god without the agency of the holy spirit religion is man's attempt to create an explanation of the realm of the spirit and the dealings of god without the assistance religion is the product of man's pride religion is a direct product of man's pride his refusal to accept that there is god but accepts that the realm of the spirit is real so people argue oh the sun is there the planets are moving around it and there are millions of galaxies and all of that and all of that and this one if the sun is too if the earth is too close to the sun if it's too far and then out of all of that the scientist who has succeeded in doing that tells you there is no god and the bible gives that person a name it's called a fool he said only a fool will say in his heart but these ones did not even say it in their heart they've written it in letters they have blogs for it only a fool will say in his heart there is no god look at me if all of a sudden you enter this place and you see this fan and this keyboard and this mic and i told you that some metals were just moving around and then a wind blew them and there was some electromagnetic force and it just came together and formed a mic and reduced down to tosin's height and then another one became a pulpit how intelligent do i sound so to tell me that some cosmic bodies flew from mars another planet had a big bang boom then the water molecules suddenly had uh what they call that thing frogs that thing that toads carry 
like figs and then started growing out legs and then became one ugly thing and then eventually grew and then became something else and then became black and ugly monkeys and then from here my great grandfather was coming out I, and then look at how dull those things are but we believe them oh, oh, oh. An experience Christianity is a revelation it's not a religion what we call Christianity the faith life the work of a believer what was committed to us by Jesus is a revelation is an experience it's an experience it was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church the Holy Spirit birthed the church. Not only did the Holy Spirit father Jesus, the Holy Spirit birthed the church. Jesus was not ashamed to call the Holy Spirit his father. He said, my father in me. There is my father who is in heaven, but there is my father who is in me. Abba, my source, my sustainer. So it was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church. Listen, we talk a lot about Christianity. Many zealous people have died in villages. Many people have been martyred. But we have ignored the Spirit of God. Why we have ignored Him is a mystery. He started the church. He started the church. And today we drive Him out of our churches. We drive him out of our cathedrals. We call him a nuisance. We say he is too noisy. We have sent him out of our families. We have sent him out of our businesses. We have sent him out of our lives. We have sent him out of our ministries. We have sent him out of our homes. We sent him out of our children. We sent him out of civilization. We sent him out of government. We sent him out of our finances. The Spirit of God. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. My assignment tonight is to bring him to your consciousness that he is a person. Write this down. The Holy Spirit has a definite form. He's not an amoeba. He's not like a boneless creature. No. The Holy Spirit has an exact distinct form. The reason why he does not reveal his form ordinarily to people is because he wants Jesus to be glorified, not because he does not have a form. Are we, are we together now? You have to get this. When you are in the realm of the Spirit, you can see the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's very difficult for you to understand this because, Pastor Femi, come. If this is Joshua Selman. I, you cannot believe that I am in Pastor Femi's house or I am in his heart. That possibility cannot be understood in a three-dimensional realm. The concept of omnipresence is not a reality that our civilization is used to. There is no, that, that ability to be omnipresent is not there. That's why the internet was allowed by God to show us that omnipresence is a possibility. I can be in my room right now scattered across over 45 nations of the world. There are different people connecting right now and they are hearing at the same time. Some with phones, some with laptops, some seated right now. As soon as this series is over, we will upload it and in minutes, literally minutes, people all over the world are downloading it. Omnipresence is a reality. The internet has shown us that it is possible. There is a station where Facebook is. Zuckerberg is a person, but he has multiplied himself 
through a mystery are we together so they say are you on facebook it's the same way saying have you given your life to christ but there is a personality called zuckerberg there is facebook office but there is facebook in your house there is facebook in your phone and whoever does not have facebook is not part of zuckerberg are you seeing that now so how will you say it is not possible for the holy spirit to be living in you and to work with you you can have facebook in your phone but you can meet with the person zuckerberg and be in the real facebook office there is a real form there is an office today you can snap called facebook but there is a similitude of it zuckerberg is in everybody's phone whenever you say zuckerberg the phone facebook is the representation of the presence of zuckerberg so when you gave your life to christ yes you were born again but jesus is in your heart it is true but in your heart in the person of the holy spirit the person jesus is in heaven seated today with a solid body he will return with it so when you say i belong to jesus it is true but the seal is the holy spirit he's the one who validates that your claims are true more on that next week when I'm, I'm teaching you on the ministry of the holy spirit the holy spirit what do i want to get today to teach you second corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 i want us to dwell in the understanding of the person thank you thank you pastor of the holy spirit let me talk about these three things the grace of our lord jesus christ he says and the love of god he says and the communion koinonia fellowship intercourse sharing together participation of the holy spirit he said these three things should be with you number one the love of god the love of god is an expression of the benevolent nature of god is an expression of his generosity his his fortitude to express his nature in and to and through men the love of god paul is saying if you want to walk and do business in this kingdom the love of god must be at work in you the love of god is revealed in the person of jesus christ and also revealed in the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus jesus did not come to the earth just as a suggestion of himself he came in response to the father's love he came to prove the love of the father that's the first thing paul says we should know the love of god i'm not dwelling so much there the second thing he says we should know is the grace of our lord jesus christ what is the grace of our lord jesus christ it's not just unmerited access we're not doing a whole teaching on grace but grace is not look, look at me grace is not unmerited access alone that is just a dimension of grace grace is a generic terminology that is used to express any and everything that comes from god any and everything that comes from god is called grace are you seeing now it's not just salvation anointing is grace wisdom is grace my definition of grace is given in the bible every good and perfect gift that comes from above is called grace it's not just unmerited access unmerited access is a dimension of the operation of grace if all you know about grace is just unmerited access no the power to perform is grace because it is not your own you are giving it the grace of our lord jesus christ then he says the communion please give us amplified let me dwell here and then we'll pray the communion i'll be teaching you the next time we meet on the ministry of the holy spirit but the starting point of the journey of your walk with god the first thing he wants to achieve in your life when the holy spirit comes to you is fellowship partnership is a product of fellowship 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 there are so many people who want partnership but they do not want fellowship 
partnership means to work with him that's that's the section four or so of our course content the ministry of the spirit that's where i will teach you signs and wonders miracles raising the dead healing the sick increase multiplication signs and wonders that's the ministry of the spirit that is partnership with him but the starting point of a believer unfortunately most of our prayers are largely prayers directed towards our needs towards warfare which is important but very little of it is a system built for fellowship fellowship and the fellowship of the holy ghost the personality of the holy ghost not just his ministry not just his power the holy spirit is a real person real person real person he walks with you he lives in you he represents the presence of the holy spirit in your life the presence of god in your life but he walks with you when the holy spirit comes into your life come darling when the holy spirit comes into your life listen the first thing he wants to achieve is not to use you for signs and wonders that's what you want so you want a sharp sharp impartation let me just fall down roll around roll around stand up and all of a sudden i look around and i say look better invite me because i have power many people know his power but they do not know his person are we together imagine a woman who has been eating her husband's money and never knows him what is his name i don't know what is his best meal i don't know what are his best colors i don't know where is he now i me too i don't know he just left home and uh, whenever he comes he knows <laughs> but you are rich it's his money you have his wife you must be an irresponsible wife correct the holy spirit there are so many things we don't know about him and we don't care the average pastor talks about him but does not know him our lives are very it is a demonstration that we are very ignorant of him we do not see the ultimate ministry of the holy spirit in your life listen is not to speak to you is that you and him will be so intertwined that you become an expression of his reality the same way he's an expression of the reality of heaven he is the one who makes thy kingdom come possible in your life so when people see you you are so bound to him you look like him you talk like him you walk like him your life is an effulgence of his presence i introduce to you tonight the person of the holy spirit he does not belong to pentecostals listen carefully he does not belong to people in lagos he does not belong to western elites he does not belong to those who can speak english and can read king james how many people go to the villages and do evangelism and dare talk to them about the holy spirit when you come and people are well dressed in suits like me say now these guys are candidates for the holy spirit but you see one mama in the village who cannot speak english and don't mind these people you see that many of us are here seated right now nobody ever introduced him to you they told you about jesus you cried and every time you pray jesus can you hear me and he looks in heaven and says i love you and i can hear you but you are not sincere i sent somebody to you you ignored the person i sent and you claim to love me no no we have ignored him and he has watched us like a gentleman in our pride and confusion we have done everything we have done we have been taught that the moment you receive him you must be a Jew christian a fiery brother or a lady that is going to marry a man of god and you see me I, I, god has never spoken to me about ministry i'm a quiet businesswoman holy spirit you can just go and remain in koinonia your team and they really need you there you see that attitude how many worshipers sing about him they write songs about him we twist our tongues on stage about him <laughs> god god this and that we don't know him we don't know him it's one thing listen it's one thing for god to be with you but it's another thing to be with god god can be with you as a person but that you be with him 
that means you have released your will to say yes lord the holy spirit wants to reveal himself the church of the lord jesus christ does not know him i'm calling us way beyond the realm of power this is way beyond the realm of miracles let me tell you something pastors leaders much more than miracles let the miracles be a derivative of his presence if they have they can happen in the absence of his presence because you can have the anointing the same way you can use my atm and withdraw money the atm will not refuse because my identity is on it the disciples did not know the holy spirit yet they went and they were raising wheelchairs casting out devils let me tell you that you cast out demons please listen carefully that you cast out demons and heal the sick is not a sign that you know him no 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 for even the demons believe in god they tremble so many people in the body of christ the moment you see a man of god walking miracles and i'm not against it moving you know somebody rising from the wheelchair you just assume that god this guy knows the holy spirit no no many people know him as an influence they know his power they know what his power can do but they don't know him because when you know him he alters you in a very remarkable way the proof that you know the holy spirit is that you submit your will for his characteristics to begin to find expression in and through you you see that yeah. when a demon you've seen people now you've seen people manifest time and again under the influence of spirit here and in different meetings notice you can for instance you can see this lovely lady right now and assuming there is a spirit attempting to influence her the moment you attempt to cast out that devil she can start crawling on her knees this is not something that she should do as a human being but the spirit is trying to execute his characteristics so when the person of the holy spirit is at work in your life your life becomes an effulgence of his characteristics you don't just say um we are angry people in our family that's how we are i'm anointed but we are angry if he lands on me i give it to you even god you know beat me i beat you god no god those, those stupid statements that people make they don't know him i have seen many anointed people who do not know him personally i sincerely consider myself not even to know him i know that many people say ah koinonia the whole name the ministry of the holy spirit my prayer every time is holy spirit reveal yourself to me while i was preparing for this series i was almost ashamed of myself i said truly 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 what am i now going to say about him that's why many people describe him because knowing him is not something it's like trying to teach you about your wife hey, Jimmy. It's difficult i can only describe her she makes cake because i have a product in my house but is she cake she has lovely sisters and brothers wonderful we can only use descriptions but do you know the best way to let men know him become an expression of him an expression of him when your life vetoes culture all those listen carefully all those embargoes that make you look like a yoruba man all those embargoes that make you look like a kogi man all those irresponsibilities that make you look like a plateau man a kaduna man when they are swallowed up by that relationship they know that somebody else has oriented your life are you getting what i'm saying now very important you can be born again casting out devils but everybody looks at you they can trace you so naturally they say ah this guy's jealousy is from this state they are like that yeah oh no forget that is anointed they are like that but when they can hardly describe your earthly identity you have switched to a true relationship with a personality that you are so intertwined with him that people can look at you and guess and say where are you i don't know whether you are from rivers or you are from plateau state or delta and you tell them i'm from zion 
the Zion of God, truly speaking. The same way when you see a jam bite in a university, even if he's 40 years, you will know he's a new student. He's an adult outside, but when he enters that institution, he will try to be matured. But you look at him, you know that no, this guy is not used to this. Are we together? The lingua franca, the way of talking, the way people are doing, there is a popular pothole that everybody in that knows. If you, you can, with your eyes closed, you can jump it. Then he falls into it. That's a jam bite. He's not drunk. He's just new. These are realities with the Holy Spirit. When I look at your life and the characteristics of the Spirit are not manifesting there, I know something is wrong. Anger. Bitterness. We think these things don't matter. The person of the Holy Spirit was designed to remedy these labs. So on a good day, based on my culture, based on my village, based on where I come from, I cannot stand and look at it. She should kneel down and lie down self because I mean I'm a man, I'm a king. He comes into your life and introduces who God is to you. He shows you who God is and says, in the kingdom that you so love and respect, Jesus that you so admire, this is not how he is. And he, not te he doesn't tell you what to do. He influences you to become it. The power to become. Not the information alone to become. The power to become. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You are talking to a man who has met the Holy Spirit. Without him, nothing good can come out of Nazareth. But with him. With him. With him. With him. The person of the Holy Spirit is the mystery. The mystery that turned a stammerer like Benny Hill to become a world-renowned figure. There are many people I have gone for meetings and have seen signs and wonders but never felt his presence. He was almost absent in that meeting. Signs and wonders can be happening but he's not producing conviction. People are just clapping but nobody is living with any sense of conviction because he's not there. When you enter Benny Hill's meeting, whether you are dead or alive, you know that the Spirit of God is there. Signs and wonders are just a confirmation but you know let me tell you how you know a man of the secret place is not miracles presence 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 not just when you are playing keyboard presence there is a presence if this lady sprays perfume very nice quality perfume and i hold her like this after a while is it true that i should begin to smell that perfume when you walk in a restaurant at the back of the restaurant where they cook and the firewood is there and you claim you were there for two hours cooking rice and you leave you should not smell fresh that place should implicate you no matter how neat you are i should see palm oil somewhere in your clothes or sweat you should smell like that rice or smell like smoke or smell like the kitchen you can't come out and you are still looking like this and say i was cooking rice not gas stove no it's a sign you were not there how many people claim they know him and they think because somebody flew under the anointing it's just a sign no sir no sir listen I tell you the secret of koinonia it's not just miracles there are ministries that work in 10 times more miracles 10 times the miracle that this ministry has worked in put together if Benny Hinn should show up here they will all happen in one night but brothers and sisters the difference that presence that's what creates conviction so you can listen to a message you already know everything about it yet it will pound you and change you and you find yourself on your knees that's something that even when your parents say you should do it you didn't do it presence you know him when you can prove that you carry his presence you know him when you can prove the reality the reality you know a lot of people see me and they say 
Apostle Joshua Selman has a call, you know, revival, helping people experience God. It's not really a call. That's not, yes, I have a dimension of a call to reveal the person of the Holy Spirit. But it's even if I'm talking about finances or I'm talking about whatever, that presence, that presence, that presence. Just like some of you are listening to me now, there's someone seated outside. The wind may not be as favorable as you want, yet something is happening to him. That's what can make somebody who is a non-Christian sit down outside. And you are talking about what is not directly salvation, but a presence lands on his head. You see him shaking and just sitting. It's not every shaking that is just anointing that carry people. It's the effect of his presence. I'd like you to close your eyes and pray one minute and say, Lord, not just your power, a revelation of your presence. Pray. Pray. The presence in my life just power for miracles you are in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God he says listen and the koinonia the fellowship that the Holy Spirit is not an archangel please the Holy Spirit is not an archangel the Holy Spirit is not the firstborn of the angels no he is called the angel of the Lord's presence but the word angel there means the messenger of the Lord's presence. The conveyor, not the slave of God. No. 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 The Holy Spirit. We have ignored him so much. The Holy Spirit is the one who taught me the word. I remember, let me tell you, next, the next time we meet, I will share with you a lot of stories about my work with the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Ghost started with me. The Spirit of God is not power. Many people want power. They want somebody to rise from wheelchair. Because you think that's what will bring members. Have you not seen signs and wonders produce us? No. His presence. His presence is a product of a real relationship. Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you talk to him? Do you respect him? Is your life an effulgence of his characteristics? Show me how he, dis he took that anger out of your life. Show me how he's taken your tribe and culture out of your life. I've shared a bit of my experiences with you people when I would be in the room lying down and I would see a mist, like fog, what you call fog, a mist. The shape of a man standing there a real mist next the next time we meet I'll share with you all these encounters a real mist and brothers and sisters I will be frozen not just under his power his influence every part of me is shaking like a leaf for hours I don't know what to, it's like things are entering me and leaving me I cannot even explain is it that he's speaking to me is it impartation is it deliverance I don't even know all I know is that like a hand upon me and I tell you I remain like that for hours sometimes I will not even say one word one word it's not all this fake trying to pray and check time and say it's two hours let me still so that no 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 his presence defines your longevity his presence defines how you pray his presence defines what happens you don't tell him nah. his presence till today that is a practice i will never trade for anything no matter who i become or what i become listen let me tell you something the moment the moment you say oh god give me tea i bind every devil you're not going to experience his presence but calm down and set the atmosphere spirit of the living god you are welcome here i give you my life prayer hear me prayer was primarily designed as a spiritual system to know him to meet with him 
prayer was designed primarily as the system that conveys his presence to you there is the warfare dimension of prayer there is intercession there is supplication there is the prayer but he said when you pray pray in this manner abba father listen who art in heaven not give me tea give me bread i must marry i need a child he said your kingdom your influence your person come let me tell you why many people's prayer lives are dead it's not because they cannot pray in tongues i know many people's prayer life my prayer life is one of the richest points of my christian life my my prayer i pray that one day during a vigil here after we do anything we will we'll pray i want to show you what i do in the secret place my prayer life is not a boring time you know why because i don't carry all these things that people i don't enter his presence just disturbing him and talking stupid things let me tell you there is a strategy that the devil uses for your prayer life the moment you want to pray he tries to make you weak you will even think you don't have the strength for five minutes time of prayer and then this is what many of us do you just stand up oh god i've been telling you about this thing oh god my job is coming tomorrow no you don't need his presence you need power for that one when you want his presence be ready to give him time this hurry hurry thing that people do you will not find him that way no worship begin to set the atmosphere i have made i have made an altar you see that an altar i have found the night time to be my best time of not just intercession and warfare alone but deep intimacy because in the daytime your phone is ringing somebody is disturbing you see don't ever give an excuse for why you don't seek him I'm married. I have ten children. I I am I am um, an accountant. We finish in the bank late. You always have time for what you love. Hallelujah. I'm yet to see what can distract me when I'm having deep fellowship with the Holy Spirit my phone can ring to hell anything can happen you must you you use desire and respect to keep his presence not just faith desire and respect come and you are praying the holy spirit your your boyfriend hey, holy, um, holy spirit how are you um, um, uh, my boyfriend how am i holy spirit how are you um, this, no 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 no. you are not serious and it's not just moving ba, 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 ba. and you are running ba, 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 ba. that's warfare not fellowship when you are ready for fellowship you let him define the modus operandi of the prayer session he is lord over the prayer session there are times i go to pray and as soon as i get there immediately do you know sometimes let me tell you what happens sometimes i can be studying my bible or even just relaxing i know when his presence shows up now his manifested presence the moment i begin to sense his presence around i try to discern is this just wanting me to pray or something immediately i go and lock my door the holy spirit loves privacy he's a very private person forget that you see his power like this the holy spirit there are things he will never do and show you in public no sir thank god for corporate gathering but the specifics of his dealings with you must be in the secret place sleep me no that's why many people's prayer lives are not rich let me tell you when he comes the first thing that happens is he's that man to learn it learn it the presence of the holy spirit should affect your spirit soul and body when he comes it's not just by faith you know he's there his influence envelopes you this is how people become strong presence carriers not just power carriers presence 
Benny Hinn was describing one time, you know, he's my mentor in that area, and Benny Hinn was describing how he was preparing for meetings. Do you know? He said when he's preparing for meetings, it is directly from the secret place. He would just bath. Ask anybody who knows me. I know many times we are coming directly from a trip, but Koinonia here, especially Miracle Service, it is from prayer and fellowship straight. You see me stand up and come here. Not just no, no matter how many minutes. Stand up from watching football and just say, Kai, my youth, let me just wear my tie quickly. Who are you playing games with? You want to come and cast out devils? You want to come and change somebody who they use a spell to keep him a non-Christian for 30 years? Who do you think you are that you want to speak in two hours? I remember I was teaching one time on um, revelation of heaven and hell. He was outside. One, uh, at, is it an Imam or Ustaz? One gentleman, he studied Arabic. He was seated outside while the teaching was going on. I mean the presence of God was pounding on that gentleman and the next thing all of a sudden outside here the overflow the heavens were open for him and he had a vision of Jesus way before an altar call he, I don't know where that guy is now but that kind of born again there's no going back encounters are not products of power encounters are products of a person invited into your life and the effect of his presence this encounter thing that you see people talk about me different ministries they write all kinds of the supernatural when they say the supernatural let me tell you what they mean a man of god who comes and somebody falls down falls down a few healings here and they say man it was a powerful meeting let me tell you an encounter is an experience that makes a person and a thing real to you it doesn't have to be visionary but it must be supernatural Are we together imagine if all of us here inside and outside imagine all the people here that we become true presence carriers do you know do you know the dimension of the kingdom you will produce in the life of people dimension all these many discussion and counseling you just come and stand near somebody and a presence there is an invisible personality with you i tell you i give you two or three minutes you see that person shaking the person is not shaking just because they are not help, 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 I'm sorry. the person is not shaking just because there is an anointing the person is shaking simply because you think his power that's what people say that this is not power this is presence you go into a business meeting you carry that cloud you go to your home where there is a shrine that they smuggle somewhere you don't need to know whether they planted it in a football field under whatever just carry that present like the ark of god in the house of obededom and you watch what begins to happen one of our ladies here was telling me i think she went home and she said she just played one koinonia message and when she played she said it was like human beings were running physically out of the house presence 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 balaam caused them and he turned and saw no 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 the shout of a king his voice his presence is in their midst let me tell you what i will explain to you next week but the key to walking in strange levels of health and freshness physical biological freshness is not just rubbing goat milk cream and all of this let me tell you the presence of god can revitalize revitalize are you a christian revitalize all this issue of somebody 20 years you are looking like 30 sluggish you are this and that <clears throat> let his presence roast away all that chaff out of you in all sincerity and in all truth i truly consider myself to be stronger and better and happier than ever the world is full of sad people angry and sad people you know why my wife offended me my husband offended me they didn't pay salary this person did this the government is wicked 
Buhari is not a nice man. This one did this. Um, Osimba Joy is not doing well. This one is doing this. Let me tell you. Joy is not a commodity that you can get on earth. Joy is one of the blessings of his presence. Joy. Joy is not just laughing like a fool. The ability to sustain and ab you ignore the storms. That your you can see people in see. Let me tell you, in the olden days when they were going to kill missionaries, before they would bomb, they would blow them. They fed them to lions. Lions. And Peronero will sit on his throne in a theater, and they will bring out one of the saints. Do you know how the guy saw? They took human beings and tied them and then they lit them to be the torchlight that you used to see. Human beings roasting to give light. And many of them before they died, they sang amazing grace. They said, no, 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 no. When you laugh in the midst of the storm, it's not natural. The Holy Ghost is a sign that you are aware. They were about to stone Stephen. All this frowning around, thinking you are the first. The devil will cheat you. You must learn a system of joy. I know there's no money in your pocket, but don't allow. The first sign of depression is that it has a way of taking away joy. When men are about to die, the first thing is they stop talking. Ask the doctors. They are angry. They have entered into a state of acute depression. But he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Strength. You see why many people are weak? You will never come and meet me like this. Ah, life. Joy. Joy unspeakable. You can't fake that one. His presence gives me joy. All the time. All the time. It doesn't mean everything just happens the way I want. No. There are, there are too many people to annoy you every 24 hours. That's what Satan wants. As you are sharing the grace, somebody matches your, your leg by mistake. And you say, ah, but, I say what? Uh, what uh, allow me to tell you, sorry, I was about to say it. And it spoils your mind. I say, this koinonia, it's just because we are serving God. Otherwise, your joy is gone. Is your joy so small? Rich in joy. He said, for with joy shall you draw. It's one of the reasons why many people don't get miracles. Haven't believed they don't have joy. The joy of the Lord that is your strength. They don't have it. See, let me tell you something. Some of you came to Koinonia sad, angry, depressed, as if the whole world is on you. When there is nothing else you have, keep your joy. In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy that I now have it truly comes alive every time I hear your voice there are times that we go for meetings and the hospitality is not at its best sometimes it can be so annoying because we've traveled so far and you see the people wasting time maybe keeping us so long in the airport to pick us those things can bring anger and all of a sudden I remember the joy of the Lord the joy of the Lord if you remember your bank account to be happy you will soon die if you remember the presence of your child if you remember that oh I have my certificate under under one newspaper that I wrapped if that is why you are happy this world does not have room for that to give you joy do you know many people try other things trying to get joy they try education they try marriage they try money this money thing you see they try everything they try bullying others they try politics no the true source of joy joy unspeakable is the Holy Spirit look at what happened to Job a man boils lost his entire estate dogs were licking him he was seated in the ashes the wife had looked at him and he said though he slay me yet will I trust him my joy uh -uh. Satan has not cheated you if he does not succeed in making you ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit I don't care what else leaves you if the Holy Spirit is in your life Convert that fellowship. 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 Listen. Tonight is a night of restoration. Because some of us, you were not like this. Listen carefully. 
that's not how you started with God there are people here scattered across the day you became a pastor the day you became a man of God you became a reverend the day you married a pastor the day they gave you a position of a president that's the day fellowship died no need for fellowship again I'm busy busy for what busy for what I, I now have a job you know before I, I wasn't working but now my job requires that I'm in Brazil today Portaco tomorrow I barely have time hey. the spirit cultivate fellowship with him your life would have been ten times better than it is if you did not ignore him now you may say he's in me but you ignored his person i can have a visitor in my house and leave him in the parlor in anger to prove to him that you are wasting my time and enter another parlor and be doing a business discussion is he in my house yes but are we in fellowship no don't say god is in my heart don't say the holy spirit is in my heart are you engaging him i know you prayed oh i prayed about it what did he say me i shall pray if you pray and did not have an instruction or a direction from the word you have not prayed the confusion in the life of many people today listen there are many there are many things in people's life there are people today who have traveled to geographic locations where they have no business being there somebody just got up and felt like god was sending him to um, australia the holy spirit was not consulted you just felt it was just a, a rumbling in my stomach and you got up and got visa and went and you are almost dying in australia there are people who they just sat down and they ignored him and started churches they had prayer meetings they had evangelical meetings and just assumed kai i think we are large enough to start a church and they started it think how many things have gone wrong in our lives sincerely because we have ignored him think how many people right now are regretting their marriages because they ignored him my mother said i should just marry anything and i just marry. ignored him he told you have three children you had seven you are seeing what is causing you now he said we ignore him all around think of how he has cautioned people many times and we refused our stubbornness and stiff neckedness tonight is a night of genuine restoration there are many people you used to walk with him his presence the holy spirit would wake you wake you at specific times there are people who have that encounter where he would wake them but now you threw him out the holy spirit is like um in fact when you study certain hebrew studies he's like a woman that's where you get the word roak hakodesh you see that it's a feminine characteristics if he's not invited he does not come if you keep him in the parlor he remains there forever you tell him holy spirit enter my house but parlor bedroom and the first toilet that's that's where you should don't ever enter my kitchen you will keep eating nonsense and have a beautiful parlor because the area you allow his influence is the area you see the glory of god don't say he's in me did you invite him to your finances his presence not his principles we try to learn bible we go to theology schools we go to bible schools and we never consult the author i told you he's the author of scripture he worked with people in the old testament are you not seeing how he turned a little boy called samuel to a wonder he called somebody looking like me samson and made him a judge over israel look at the people he transformed he turned deborah mary said how shall these things be he said don't worry the father of this child will be the holy ghost the power of the highest the holy spirit the manifestation of the possibilities of god listen let me tell you everything today that is happening that is good i learned something from bishop Oyedepo. he said everything that is good credit it to god everything that is bad credit it to my not hearing him i adopt that principle 
if there is anything that is good in koinonia the wisdom from the system of the messages if there is anything that is bad in koinonia i take responsibility it is a revelation of the area where i've not yielded to him so is your life so is your life you gave him access to your academics look what his presence is doing you literally sit down in an exam for 20 minutes you don't have an idea all of a sudden something comes in your life and you begin to write even things you know that you did not read you gave him permission there but you rejected him in your finances and you say look you know this economics we have to do it with intelligence and oh how gentle he is he will truly step back truly step back the psalmist said cast me not away from your presence he said take not your holy spirit from me it's not enough to have him have you allowed his person to influence your life that's what we're talking about look at many of our parents he's not an influencer of their decisions they have used experience and look at the things that are happening in their lives because they have ignored him you are too young to master life your age is too small to navigate the vicissitudes of life the oldest person on earth is not up to 150 years trust the ancient spirit is the holy ghost spirit of the living is the holy ghost scepter of the kingdom of kings is the holy ghost seal of the age to come is changing I woke up this morning and I got a very sad text from a man of God. I remember talking to the man. He said he wanted to start ministry somewhere. And I told him, I, I said, I think you need to relax. I look at you and I do not see, based on the description of the kind of ministry, I don't think I've seen intimacy in the Holy Spirit. And he ignored me. He just forgot everything. And he went to go and start the ministry. And he sent me a text this morning. He said, I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do. He said for the first time in his life, early this morning, he was contemplating suicide. I can tell you, not with the Holy Ghost. Impossible suicide. Where from? The voice that can show you a way where there is no way. The Holy Spirit. When the nation of Israel were trapped, he said, I will send my angel before you. That was the angel of the Lord's presence to speak. Not just an angel like Michael, no. Mary, how shall these things be? Seeing not that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest. Please hear me. The secret to you doing what has never been done in your family is not anger, it's him. All of them embraced the spirit you you are not embracing anything you just say i'm born again i will be successful it's pride you are a joker nobody succeeds without the assistance of a spirit i will teach you partnership next week the ministry of the holy spirit i tell you his ministry to unbelievers his ministry to believers and his present day ministry to the church but tonight I want you to know that the Holy Spirit does not just want to be in you. He wants to walk with you. And the Lord walking with them. And the Lord walking with Koinonia. And the Spirit, the author of the Bible, opening it to Joshua Selman. Not that you go on YouTube and download a message and say, Ah, this Greek word, you write it, coin them together and go and preach. No. The same way where you meet an author he autographs on the copy he gives you and you know that you met with the author to you i will run my beloved you've captured my heart listen come can you surrender your life to the Holy Spirit? 
I'm not saying be born again. That's not what I'm saying. Donate your life. Holy Spirit. I donate myself. I'm tired of what I can be without you. And my lifetime is too short to keep guessing. And later find out I've wasted my life. So I hand it over to you. Are we together? To you I will run, my beloved. That songs of Solomon. Like the prodigal son who the father saw him and he ran, embraced him, hugged him, put back the robe of royalty, the signet ring, and said, My son was lost, but now I'm found. Many of you have left him. You left his influence and you went to do your own thing. I'm not just talking of it doesn't have to be bad but if it's not him you will still suffer how many hired servants do my father have they live in plenty and here I am a son of the kingdom feeding on peace and my benevolent father is there but I must run to him before he comes I will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants he said and when the father saw him afar off he ran one thing i know with the holy spirit all he needs is for you to take one step and say holy spirit i ignored you i have ignored you in my life the moment a guy came into my life he just took away my brain took away my sense took away you would you dance with me lover of my soul to the song of all songs Sing it one more time. Would you dance with me, oh, love of my soul, baby, to the song of all. Listen, let me tell you how I prepare for miracle service. I lie down with my paper and my Bible. I don't just get up and say the sick are coming. Spirit of the living God, I am limited. Thousands of people are coming. Probably thousands and millions of others connecting around the world. I am too small to heal them. I am too small. And I mean his presence just mantling me. And I'm saying, Lord, right about now there are people. The venue is packed full. The troubles that people have is too much. I can't be the one to solve it. And then he tells me, don't worry. Partnership. Let me show you one scripture before we round up. Give me this scripture, please, quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. I hope I'm right. It just came to my spirit. Please quickly, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. I never walk alone. I know he's with me. For we are what? Laborers together with God. We are laborers, partners. Shalakota Salabatea. Partners. 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 There is a role I have to play. There is a role he has to play. I'm a partner with him. I never walk alone. I would have died if I'm the one leading Koinonia alone. No, I'm too small. I don't have that wisdom and experience. My life is too small to be the way it is by my own strength. Young Gicho wrote a book, Holy Spirit, my senior, not my mate. Holy Spirit, my senior partner. In his church, he has a big chair like you find in the Anglican. That chair is for the Holy Ghost. He said, I cannot be sitting down in front and the Holy Spirit is nowhere. You may not put a physical chair, but open up your heart and say, this is for you forever. Forever. 
and then he will show you things i told you he is the wisdom of god he comes into your life and produces signs and wonders i look at my life today and i'm humbled i don't even know what to tell him holy spirit what you are seeing if there is anything good that you see in my life behind the scene there is somebody living through me if i stretch my hands is his hands what you are hearing now you are looking at a physical person but if god were to open your eyes i'm like a puppet he's speaking through me that's why the power that comes from him only flows through me to you the devils know what they are seeing the sicknesses know what they are seeing the lady who had an issue here when i was hearing those testimonies you know they were all thanking me thank daddy what i was doing in my heart is thank the real daddy the father in me the lord of koinonia the true apostle of this ministry not joshua selman i would be stupid to claim that i have the power to lead people you made a way you made a way don't know how but you did it don't know how but you did it that's my testimony for he's moved the mountain Cause wars to fall, and with your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing hey, that's impossible. Tonight I'm standing here, and it's only may be going through things tonight that humanly speaking you don't know how it will be done that is not your business that trying to find out how it will be done is the secret to killing yourself leave that to your partner your senior partner he's the wisdom of god he's the author of scriptures he knows where he needs your answer is listen Stop weeping. Stop crying. Stop looking like light is all over your head. No. Say to the righteous. There is a reason why you say to them. He gave them the Holy Spirit. He said tarry in Jerusalem. Don't let pride make you go out and start preaching. Tarry until he comes. Look what he has done with this ministry today. You see let me tell you something every time i hear the reports about what god is doing we travel around all the place all the time tomorrow we're in lagos and i see the mighty things that he does and i see people coming sometimes to enter the car people are all around trying to touch any part of my body crying man of god and i keep looking hi do i really truly in all honesty do I really have the power to solve their problems? No. Pride is what has killed many of us. We drove his presence through pride. Yes, I'm the one. Ah, that prophetic word came from me. That prayer came from me. That uh, fasting came from me. That this, my church, I built it with my wisdom. I studied X, Y, Z. That business, I, I, I know these things. Let me tell you, ask all those who know me. I look like a bold person, but my personal life, I can be so shy. Especially when you start thanking me. Or I, I don't know where to put my face. You know this time, uh, we want to appreciate a very great man of God. Ah, you have killed me. I don't even know where I'm going to hide my face. Because I know you are lying. You think you are telling the truth, but it's a lie. I know him. Prayer point number one lord any part of my life that is yet to subscribe to your influence tonight i lay it down yes lord 
everything I hand it over to you do a handover ceremony tonight I hand it over I stop this pride of mine and I hand over my life and everything not just to your power Lord of my relationship Lord of my life Lord of my finances the chief influencer of my destiny hallelujah prayer point number two Lord manifest yourself in my life and to me man let there be a revelation of you a revelation an encounter with the Holy Ghost lift your voice and cry for some of you what you need to say is Lord restore it I want to know you I want to hear your voice I want to call you Lord I want to touch you I want to hear your voice I want to know you Lord I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know whatever i have lost because your presence was no longer in my life let it come back like the hair of samson you know what you used to carry you know what was in your life don't act like it's still there cry for mercy let it come oh god there was a grace upon my voice that every time i sang i revealed to people the reality of it's no more there. There was wisdom untold upon my life. It's no more there. Spirit of God, bring it back. many battles are you fighting in your life by yourself and it's killing you killing you because you were not designed to fight alone David would have died if he dared try to fight Goliath alone hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point tonight before I make the altar call I want you to cry a cry of revival you know what revival is many people it's not a language that the church even knows again they don't know what revival is i tell you they think they know revival when fire comes back to your life when fire comes back to your home when god returns back like they were dancing when the ark was returning back to israel revival i like you to lift your voice and cry set my life on fire set my life aflame again pray my prayer life aflame reviver my word life reviver find the flame so God find the flame so God Ale 
behalf of this ministry we ask that in any way as a person and as a ministry we have ignored any part of your presence and your ministry we ask for your mercy and Lord I pray afresh I'm asking you tonight by the privilege of the grace to lead this ministry and on behalf of your people and the thousands and the millions of people in a fresh way we invite you again to our lives we invite you again to koinonia you are the wisdom and the power of god you are god alone you are the source of every grace and unction you are the influence behind our teachings and we will outspokenly let the world know that we are nothing this is not about joshua selman this is not about the wisdom of a man we acknowledge you and we declare that to you be all the glory to you be all the praise let no flesh ever boast in your presence in the name of jesus and i pray for you as this series is on encounters with the holy ghost fresh encounters listen hear me some of you from this night you will start having series of dreams i mean dreams that will continue the next day another episode of the holy spirit revealing himself listen you will start feeling physical presence walking with you you will know that a personality is walking with you some of you will wake up in the morning and see your bibles open to chapters by the holy ghost open to chapters by the holy ghost he will lead you to the messages to listen to listen every embargo blocking his voice to your ears to confuse you i command that thing lifted right now but one of the most remarkable things that you will see tonight is brokenness there are many of you that have never had it your heart is stubborn towards anybody god a man i am the god of myself i do anything that i want to hell with anybody brokenness brokenness some of you can insult your parents they call you you blast them and off the phone insult authorities insult anybody blast your roommates from tonight something will eat you up like a cancer and you will change brand new in the name of jesus christ amen so let's deal with the ministry of the holy spirit I want you to really pay attention because this tonight's teaching will be examining the need the advantage the benefits 
and the operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives now that we have agreed that he's a person sent from God we have to examine why is he such a big deal because let me tell you something there are many believers who think discussing about the Holy Spirit is inaccurate you know you hear them say look it is Jesus we want to know he's the one who died for our sins what is all this idea about the Holy Spirit is Jesus we want to know and um, you know they make it look as though the teaching of the Holy Spirit is some kind of occultic movement and it is important for us to understand his ministry in our life John chapter 16 for our text tonight let's look at the book of John chapter 16 Jesus is teaching the disciples here and um, in the chapter before he began to introduce them to the personality of the Holy Spirit and then he went further to let them know the things that he would be doing his ministry let's read from verse 7 John chapter 16 from verse 7 we're reading down um, to 15 7 to 15 quite a long reading ready nevertheless okay I tell you the truth it is what expedient the word expedient is advantageous to your own advantage for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter notice all the names that he's used because his names are also a representation of his operation and his ministry it's in the character of god to name things according to their usage um house are people do a lot of that they name people based on what they do so you can you don't need to ask what the person is doing they can name him by his occupation or profession we do that a lot in the north this is where uh, this whole idea came from so when he is called a comforter that introduces a dimension of his ministry the comforter will not come to you but if i depart i will send him to you we're reading down to 15 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin righteousness and judgment verse 9 of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now now that's that's a very interesting we can stop there and spend all the night please go back to verse 12 it says ye cannot bear them now this is very powerful i'm, I'm coming to that point ye cannot bear them now does not mean they are too heavy for you your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit the capacity to understand spiritual things has not been activated that means the word you cannot bear them means it will not be profitable to you if i attempt to explain it to you are we together now because the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit nor can he understand them they are spiritually discerned are we together how be it next verse when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into how many truths he will guide you into the word sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth. so he will guide you into all truth for he shall speak he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it to you 15 all things that the father hath are mine therefore said i that he shall take of mine and shall show it to you praise the lord the holy spirit in as much as it is important for us to know he's a person we must be able to know that he was sent by god to accomplish specific things in the earth the holy spirit's ministry cuts across creation and humans he is not limited just to human beings you have to understand this the ministry of the holy spirit miles monroe dr miles monroe calls him the governor of the earth how powerful a description are we together now 
not the governor of men the Holy Spirit's ministry for many of us even among the charismatics we have limited the ministry of the Holy Spirit to just men and so we feel that the Holy Spirit has no relevance in culture the Holy Spirit has no relevance to plants and animals the Holy Spirit has no relevance to creation that's not true when you read Genesis chapter 1 he was the very force his first manifestation was not as a helper of man are we together now it was his presence representing the power of God that brought order and dexterity to creation I want you to know the Bible says he upholds things he upholds all things by the word of his power the Holy Spirit is the mystery that holds creation together you have to realize this he's not just um, one force that was sent to men and so if you are not a man you are not relevant no 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 we see the Holy Spirit's ministry finding expression even in animals donkeys spoke that's a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit rods bordered that's a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit a rod turned to a serpent and back again water parted all of these things we see his power the might of the Spirit of God demonstrated all through creation so I want us to know that the relevance of the Holy Spirit cuts across culture cuts across animate and inanimate things the relevance of the Holy Spirit cuts across civilization whether the 18th 19th 20th 21st century and whatever it is the relevance of the Holy Spirit cuts across dispensations dispensations when you realize this the holy spirit does not become he no longer becomes an issue of christians please listen the holy spirit is not just on earth for christians the holy spirit is god he is the spirit of god as i'm going to be teaching you the holy spirit has a ministry to creation he has a ministry in our world today cosmos the social system the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. The Holy Spirit has a ministry to believers. Are we together now? So regardless of what category you find yourself, you need the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Say Amen. Because if we do not understand some of these things, we can feel the Holy Spirit is a nuisance and he's only needed by those who want to heal the sick that's the ideology many people receive so every time we talk about the Holy Spirit we leave him to pastors and apostles and prophets and all those who want to be part of ministry as we know I'm a businessman I don't need him I'm a politician I don't need him I'm a career person I don't need him that's a fallacy the Holy Spirit is needed for life and godliness he is the life of God he is the power of God ignoring the Holy Spirit and any aspect of his ministry will cost you your effectiveness everyone say I need him Jesus the model of the church the very son of the living God the firstborn among we the begotten Jesus was helpless on the earth the Holy Spirit was required to get Mary pregnant he played the fatherly role of Mary the Holy Spirit was required are we together now in in the the growth and the understanding of Jesus as he grew in wisdom statue the Holy Spirit was responsible for his empowerment the Holy Spirit was responsible for that invincible and flawless life that Jesus lived the Holy Spirit was responsible for supplying the grace for his passion the Holy Spirit was responsible for his resurrection the Holy Spirit was responsible for his ascension responsible for the birthing the holy spirit is the mother that birthed the church we can never ignore his ministry and prosper listen to me please whether you are presbyterian whether you are an atheist whether you are a muslim christian buddhist whatever religion whether you are you are a christian catholic pentecostal charismatic orthodox 
you know whatever it is i want you to know that the holy spirit please come the holy spirit was not sent as a choice for christians no the holy spirit is god's gift to earth god's gift to humanity regardless whether you are a sinner he has a ministry in your life whether you are born again he has a ministry in your life in business in ministry as we call it fivefold whatever it is we have ignored his ministry in fact in fact many believers do not doubt that there is an existence of such a personality called the holy spirit you will seldom find people argue with you about the existence of such a personality however in fact many have even supposedly received him it's one thing to receive the holy spirit but it's another thing for his ministry to be activated in your life that you have received the holy spirit and you are even praying in tongues does not necessarily mean his ministry has been activated in your life are we together help me with this bottle of water watch this give it to me i have received this water is that true but this water was designed to accomplish specific things in me quench my thirst help me become healthy now if i keep holding this bottle for a long time i am not in doubt that there is such a possibility i know i'm feeling it i hold this bottle so if you talk about the bottle i say wow yes i hold it i'm a possessor of it but i'm not a benefactor of the advantage the possibilities that this bottle could bring i can die of thirst yet i am holding a bottle of purified water that can quench my thirst so don't be caught up with this self pride and arrogance that i know him after all the name of my church is holy spirit uh, maybe assembly or something and you convince yourself that because you mention his name and talk about him so much it means you know him no thank you the advantage that were designed were designed to take advantage of his person and his ministry not his person alone an awareness of you if this guy is a um what do we call it now let's assume that this guy is a very good driver being aware that he's a good driver is wonderful but that does not profit me if this guy now drives me then i am enjoying his ministry brothers and sisters thank you very much many of us seated here and listening to me following online have not maximized the ministry of the holy spirit we have not even allowed him we have not allowed him and i'll be showing you shortly there are specific things the holy spirit was sent to achieve in our lives i won't talk so much about his ministry to creation my focus especially in this series is on men we have been discussing the issue of men we really want to understand the dynamics of triumph and we're examining the ministry of the holy spirit with respect to men the holy spirit has a twofold assignment please write with respect to his ministry to men he has a twofold assignment the assignment of the holy spirit to men is twofold number one his ministry to unbelievers that's the starting point of his encounter with men his ministry to unbelievers unbelievers those who are yet to encounter christ those who are yet to surrender their hearts to his lordship he has a ministry to them and then number two his ministry to believers or the church the ecclesia the holy spirit has a ministry to the body of christ not just to believers to the body because believers are part of that body so he has a ministry to unbelievers and then he has a ministry to believers the church the bride of christ several things the bible tells us that the holy spirit would do in the life of unbelievers let's look at them very quickly john 15 26 to 27 john 15 26 to 27 
the Bible says when the comforter is come listen Jesus is teaching here whom I will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father what will he do he shall what testify testify like a witness to my reality remember we discussed the last time that the Holy Spirit makes Jesus real there is no amount of oratory there is no amount of audiovisual that is capable of making Jesus real to a man no amount of Jesus film no amount of um, what do we call it uh, visual drawings that can attempt to paint it can just capture emotionally but it, is, it cannot reveal Jesus the Holy Spirit is the one who testifies of Jesus are we together now next verse 27 and ye also sh shall bear witness because ye have ye have been with me from the beginning Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit will bear witness to unbelievers and just like him that will be for next week you will also end up being like him to men witnesses are we together the faithful witness is not a man he's the spirit of god he's called the faithful witness unbending the faithful witness testifying of him when you see people convicted give us john 6 44 when you see jesus come alive to people brothers and sisters listen the reason why it is not difficult for us to believe in jesus huh, is because we were born in a religious environment and so although we had not surrendered completely to him we were in an environment that seemed to appreciate his reality so it was not very difficult to switch are we together but if you were born a buddhist an atheist a non-christian or your father was involved in all kinds of um extreme witchcraft you will realize that it takes the power of the holy spirit to make jesus real why will you walk up to me and just tell me i am going to die i'm going to perish i should hand over my life to someone called jesus what is so special about him i'm already rich i'm already healthy i already live in a mansion i already live with all kinds of luxurious things why do i need jesus it's very easy in africa for people to receive jesus because our economy has already tilted us to uh, the point where we need a savior so it's very logical the moment you propose jesus and what he can do it makes a lot of sense to a man who is hungry but you see when you go around the world and meet men in their arrogance who have built empires without him what exactly should make a multi-millionaire what exactly should make a man who is a professor per excellence what exactly should make a man listen to you enough to respond to an altar call it takes the Holy Spirit it's not just good talk it's not just evangelism look at what he says here no man can come to me except the father and I told you there are two, two dimensions there is the father in heaven Abba the source and sustainer residing in the heavens are we together the first person of the Godhead then there is the father in me the Holy Spirit are we together now he says no man can come to me except the father which had sent me draw him and I will raise him up on the last day no man please hear me if you have ever given your life to Jesus Christ it never happened just by your willpower alone uh -uh. the Holy Spirit was there it's unfortunate right now we organize crusades without him emotional crusades we share tracts we put jesus film at the end of it people cry you see them crying you think before you make the altar call they should come and lie down while you are making the altar call they are crying and they are still sitting down looking at you that's to tell you that this thing um, is the same thing that would happen to them if they watched an indian film are we together no man can come to me no man has the power to be so convinced just by the eloquence of men no your words are not articulate enough 
to cause a man who is 50 years in his mind as an atheist has written all kinds of scientific propositions disproving the existence of God and then you claim to speak to him in 20 minutes and have him bend down on his knees no it takes more than just intelligence it takes the power of the Holy Spirit I am it never ceases to amaze me the sermon of Peter have you read Acts chapter 2 what a boring sermon what a disjointed sermon I've been teaching our school of ministry homiletics for five years I've been teaching them how to preach and I understand certain things that should be contained in a good message to make sense Peter's message had only two of that five you're meeting a lot of people and then telling them some history that doesn't make sense wasting their time and then at the end i thought they would say what a boring man you gathered us here to waste our time the bible says they were caught to the heart that's not the excellency of speech that's the power of god are we together the holy spirit convicts and draws the heart of unbelievers to jesus when you read john 16 from verse 7 it says that when he the spirit of truth is come please give it to us john 16 verse 7 when the spirit of truth is come he says he will reprove the world the world of unbelievers of three things of sin righteousness judgment go to verse um yes thank you verse 8 when he is come he will reprove the world of sin righteousness and judgment listen no man has the power to create conviction in men every man that tries to convict men brings condemnation to men are we together now it is not given to man to bring conviction no you can only partner with him it is the holy spirit who can convict a man brothers and sisters men are arrogant the fallen nature designed men that way when a man kneels down to the lordship of christ especially when he's an accomplished man then it was the power of the holy spirit are we together now when i make altar calls i am surprised sometimes i see the people coming out you know that he must have taken god to bring these people out they are even surprised as they are coming out what am i doing here the holy spirit how many pastors how many evangelists do all kinds of theological dissertations and they refuse his ministry they finish preaching and they call and people come out while you are praying the prayer somebody is pinching someone and say the camera is capturing us and they are laughing at the end of it you say amen and then you count the number of people and after 10 years we say we have won 1 million people to Christ the convicting power Ben Hinn shared something very powerful about the Holy Spirit that blessed me. Watch this. Without the Holy Spirit, miracles will not change people. <laughs> the nation of Israel saw more miracles than we will see combined in our generation. Yet, yet the Bible called them a stiff-necked people. When Jesus walked on earth, John 20 tells us, many more miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not documented in this book so there are many more miracles we only know he walked on water because it was recorded there were many other miracles jesus did but the bible says when he resurrected some doubted how do you doubt a man who is this invincible he died lazarus died he brought lazarus back to life the son of the widow at name brought her back to life the daughter of the centurion brought her back to life made five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand men aside women and children walked on water had a, a harvest of fish without any kind of assistance yet the people doubted him when jesus died they all ran away when he resurrected they did not even believe thomas said no way i will have to see him and put my hand in his hands and his side why the holy spirit was not given to them the holy spirit it is possible don't forget that 
Jesus sent the 12 and the 70 all together. They went out to go and do evangelism. They themselves said, even the demons, brothers and sisters, when a demon bows to you, that's like the apex of a demonstration of spiritual power. Yet, they doubted Jesus. They doubted the life of God. You can go to theology school without the Holy Spirit. Preach for many years and one day hang yourself and say, I don't believe this. Have you seen people after several years of preaching who just look at this? I once saw a book, I didn't read it, of a man who was once a Christian and then I think he refused to be a Christian and he said it's nonsense. He said there are many inconsistencies in the Bible. And frankly speaking, physically, when you look at what he's saying he brought a lot of logical things from a historical perspective from an archaeological perspective from even a logical perspective from a prophetic perspective brought all these things together and just said christians are wasting their time this is complete nonsense we are being as indoctrinated as whatever produce the book this is somebody who was once in christ are we together Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot truly experience the reality of Jesus. You will be claiming He's real to you. It is the absence of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes people to stand and sing hallelujah. And all of a sudden when things go wrong, they just go to a herbalist. And they say after all, it doesn't matter. Every power belongs to God. When you see people talk like that, they are not enjoying the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You join a charm come to church and receive prophecy and then add another broomstick that they gave you in one coven mix everything and say it's just different ways of manifesting the power of god no sir no sir now i'm talking to africa some of us here our parents is amazing there are pastors who love god they are not fake but the ministry of the holy spirit is not in them the moment especially when people get sick you see people bringing all kinds of alternatives they tell you they're in christ and you look at what they are doing they say no 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 the guy is not exactly a herbalist he's just gifted by who everybody's influenced by a spirit are we together now very very important what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction and recognition of the need for jesus what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction and recognition of the need for jesus that's his assignment to unbelievers he has the exclusive ministry of bringing conviction supernatural conviction like some of you now are being convicted supernaturally is very supernatural is the, there's no there's no physical logic to it this is something that is entirely supernatural can bring a man to his knees to embrace jesus saul of tarsus was on his way to damascus a man who was so hardened you will imagine when they were killing the Messiah stephen it was it was saul that sat down and they kept their clothes at his feet yet he later became the greatest one of the greatest of the apostles listen how we need the truth about jesus to spread across our families to spread across territory the issue of introducing jesus to people listen 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 I don't like giving it religious names because we have abused religious names if i say evangelism now i know what comes to your mind a tract and people two by two strolling and knocking someone's door that's wonderful that's an aspect of evangelism but this is if you see introducing jesus to creation is a matter of life and death it's not an option by a sect to increase their membership no jesus is the answer for the world today you know that song above him there's no other jesus 
Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. How we need everyone around us saved. How we need, do you know, most of the confusion in our society is because men are governed by an ideology that is outside of the Christ. Look at the way heaven is. Total submission to the Lordship of the Christ. Look at the dexterity and the order. Our world, our government, our politicians, our business people have no respect and recognition for Jesus. The issue of, in, of opening up the hearts of men to receive Jesus is not an activity for preachers. No! The Holy Spirit has a ministry. The first and primary way that the earth will be full of the knowledge of the glory of Christ is not building of luxurious structures and having multi-millionaires spread across a church. The first thing is the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Number one, first things first. I don't care how rich a church becomes. I don't care how prosperous. I don't care how educated a people become. If Jesus is not instituted in an environment there is trouble when Ebola broke out something that is a temporary thing governments came together to drive it out because they perceived it to be a threat Jesuslessness is a threat is a threat to humanity a life truly without Jesus please hear me this is not an initiation into a Christian's religion there's nothing as terrible as a life that does not acknowledge Jesus. As we are seated here, there are many of our loved ones who are not saved. Completely not saved. They laugh at you every time you mention, ah, Don't bring any Jesus thing, please. I'm not a small child. We did all those things so when we were young. You hear them say, now that we are old, we are facing life intelligently. Jesus has been tagged a nuisance to civilization you mention him and you see the disdain especially on young people you mention jesus is as if you mention unemployment you mention jesus is as if you mention barrenness who indoctrinated us who pushed away the ministry of the holy spirit such that we cannot even partner with him to allow men listen the holy spirit is still on earth today carrying out a massive campaign on unbelievers what is he doing convicting them that's why you find out that right now find out what is happening across the world especially the Middle East mighty manifestations of Jesus people having encounters of Jesus since we are not going to be serious since we are more interested in making money since we are more interested in having building empires and being called apostles and prophets the Holy Spirit himself engineering conversions in whole families without the assistance of a single individual he said if you will not praise me I will raise up stones everybody say conviction say it again conviction say recognition do you know do you know that Saul was not part of those who walked with Jesus Christ yes he was a Pharisee but he was not part of those who walked with Jesus Christ but the moment he encountered Jesus he called him Lord see for those of you who have had visionary encounters let me tell you something in fact any kind of encounter if it is the Holy Spirit that introduces Jesus to you you must acknowledge him as Lord if it's a preacher that introduced Jesus to you without the assistance of the Holy Spirit you may just see him as an intelligent historian one of the many and you will clap for him every religion believes in Jesus but as what as what hallelujah say conviction we need to allow the Holy Spirit step into our homes and change our loved ones, 
step into our offices and change people step into governments of nations the decadence that is eating up society is as a result of this exclusion thing holy spirit remain in church his first ministry is not to throw people under the anointing no his first ministry to men is to introduce jesus to them he makes jesus real although never seen him we believe him why the holy spirit the faithful witness the faithful witness have you ever seen him to believe him how can you be this convinced the spirit of god he makes jesus real without the holy spirit an unbeliever can even come out and recite salvation prayer and not be born again hallelujah the saints and the angels bow the redeemed worship you now holy 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 are you lord holy 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 are you lord powerful song holy 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 are you lord And the angels bow The redeemed Worship you now Holy, holy, holy Are you Lord? I'd like us to pray one minute And say Holy Spirit I give you access to every unbeliever in my life I allow you Step into my home Step into my office Are we praying Koinonia? Holy Spirit my village is in need of your touch holy spirit my office is in need of your touch holy spirit my campus is in need of your touch holy spirit my environment nigeria is in need of your touch holy spirit africa is in need of your touch Holy Spirit, my people are in need of your touch. Bring conviction. Bring conviction. Bring conviction. Bring conviction. Bring conviction to my father. Bring conviction to my mother. Bring conviction to my sisters. Bring conviction to my brothers. Are you praying? Lord, I'm tired of talking to them every time and they insult me. I've been doing it without you. But Holy Spirit, visit them yourself. You are the only one who can make Jesus real. The way my father is, no preacher can lead him to Christ. He needs you by himself. The way my unbelieving brother is, they need you. Lift your voice and pray. We are talking about the Holy Spirit here. Hallelujah. Listen, let me teach you something about intercession for souls. When you are praying for souls, don't just pray blindly. Oh God, save them. No. Cry for an encounter with them and the spirit of god it's a collision one person must give up if it's the holy spirit no 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 you can't hit the holy spirit and it goes back it's a joke if the holy spirit comes it will swallow up every stubbornness it was here some years ago while i was teaching on the reality of heaven and hell one person who i think he was an ustas or something like that had read arabic was sitting in the overflow outside I don't know how the I'm sure just for curiosity just came to sit down and listen and while I was speaking all of a sudden he said the moment I was speaking it's as if outside just became blood and everywhere just vanished 
and there he was standing alone with jesus the son of the living god while koinonia was going on that guy broke down gave his life to christ god filled with the holy spirit now that's the holy spirit at work please listen many of us are suffering today because the heads of our home have thrown him out so he can come in he can come into your life but not your home because the doorway the priest of the house has willingly kicked him out many of our fathers don't recognize him many of our mothers don't recognize him you talk about him, oh, please don't bring all those church church garbages you need to pray and say holy spirit you are the testifier of jesus you are the testifier of jesus i'll never forget one of the most awesome testimonies that we've had in this ministry one of our ladies uh, long before she left it was a non-christian family everyone then she was the first to get born again and kept growing and building and then gradually i think it was her mom who later got born again supernaturally a non-christian family not just a few people and then gradually i think her younger brother or there about got born again everyone got born again and it was the dad that was left he was angry already persecuting them criticizing them you know you know what i'm talking about withdrawal of benefits etc etc and then one time i would never forget one night we we're preparing to go for prayers and this lady comes to me crying and saying the lord has done it god is faithful what happened i don't know what made the father to meander into living faith fire fell on his head that day do you know the holy spirit has a way of navigating a man who has no business going for a crusade he will just be passing and say what who is this guy shouting and stand there and that's it that's the end of it do you believe what i'm sharing with you his ministry to unbelievers if you know this never never get rid of anyone the holy spirit has not given up on are you hearing some of us have our brothers our sisters our loved ones they smoke around they snuff everything as stubborn as whatever you give them a bible they sell it and use the money to drink all kinds of things when the holy spirit meets them one day you will just see that gentleman who used to dress like a thief holding his bible and saying are we not going for koinonia and you say no, no. oh it will happen no oh. it will happen in the name of jesus why are you surprised have you forgotten how you used to be have you forgotten so soon that the holy spirit can convict me number two quickly his ministry to believers and i want to dwell here a little and then the holy spirit has a very extensive ministry to believers who are believers recipients of the life and the power of god recipients of the grace and the mercy of god those who have been redeemed partakers of his divine nature now write this down please give us second corinthians 13 verse 14 and then philippians chapter 2 verse 1 second corinthians 13 14 a popular scripture in the body of christ the ministry of the holy spirit in a believer is primarily carried out through communion fellowship please understand this the ministry of the holy spirit in the life of a believer the principal channel for the holy spirit manifesting his ministry and trust me i know what i'm talking about the holy spirit's the chiefest way that he manifests his ministry in a believer is true communion please give us amplified if we can find it the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and then he says and the presence and fellowship the communion the sharing together the participation in and then king james says of the holy spirit be with you amen so there is a fellowship say fellowship there is a communion say communion 
without the communion of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit cannot find his ministry cannot find expression to a believer what is communion fellowship what is communion oneness are we together now let me teach you something listen um, I know you're writing can I use you again thank you there is the dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in you there is the dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit with you Alos Paracletos one who is called to walk an extension of the ministry of Jesus are we together now both are very important but communion is the key communion intimacy koinonia the word are we together that participation fellowship a recognition of himself in your life and then that allowance creating the atmosphere your assignment in terms of your partnership with the holy spirit as far as communion is concerned is to create the atmosphere create the atmosphere create the atmosphere for communion to be possible create the atmosphere for fellowship communion does not happen anywhere and anyhow there is an atmosphere there is a state of being there is a state of surrender that can cause communion to be a possibility in the life of a person thank you hallelujah many of us fail to create that atmosphere every other thing that i'm going to be listing here is communion dependent is fellowship dependent if you do not have what the bible calls the fellowship of the spirit it is impossible to access these other dimensions of his ministry fellowship philippians chapter 2 verse 1 Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 it says if there be therefore any consolation in Christ if any comfort of love then it says if any fellowship there is such a thing as the fellowship of the Spirit fellowship of the Spirit fellowship of the Spirit that introduces you to a lot of other things when I sat down I watched a Jimmy and his dear daughter he was busy talking with her that's fellowship communion koinonia and then after a while of conversation she left with his phone I think he put a game for her and she was happily going and I said that's the fringe benefit of communion it started with her coming to him they were discussing I did not know and then as a result she had access many of us want to access the riches of Christ the blessings of Christ but we ignore the place of communion the platform upon which the ministry of the Holy Spirit is manifested in the life of a believer is not prayer is not fasting is communion prayer is a subset of fellowship are we together now hmm. fellowship so what is the first ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer let's hurry up number one write it down please the first assignment of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is activation of his spiritual senses activation of his spiritual senses a believer is one who has already received the life of God when the Holy Spirit comes into the life of a believer his first assignment is activation of your spiritual senses the Bible calls it being alive to Christ first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 please first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 very popular scripture the Bible says read please everyone is projected one to read but the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God why for they are what foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned let me explain to you what that means the natural man not just the carnal man the natural man 
one who is alienated from anything Christ, among other things, responds to his environment only based on his sensory perception. Are we together? So his decisions are made from the impulses around him. The limit of his interaction is just a three-dimensional realm. The natural man. The Bible says for such a person, his organs of interaction with spiritual realities are deadened. He cannot understand spiritual things because they are not scientific. Spiritual things are not scientific. Spiritual things are not philosophical. They are spiritual. So your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit must be heightened and activated for it to make sense. It does not make sense to drop a prayer request on the ground and dance around it. A natural man will tell you that stupidity. It does not make sense to write your problems on a prayer request and come and drop it at the altar, have a man lay hands and get up smiling. It does not make sense to believe something you have not seen and start taking action in advance. No. The natural man cannot do that. In the world, they say seeing is believing. If I can't see it, I shouldn't believe it. How in the world do you want somebody whose organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit has not been heightened to believe that someone can stand with a growth, a lump, a malignant growth, cancerous growth, and just with a word, it disappears? No. See, let me tell you something. Most people's doubting of God is because the Holy Spirit has not activated their organs of its interaction. Remember when you used to laugh at praying, praying in tongues? Remember? That's what was happening to you. You see believers praying and sweating and you say, Ay, Who lied to these people? See you now, you are in the same thing. Happily, a forerunner of it. How about the Bible? How about confession? To believe that you can communicate things, thank you. That you can communicate things and then they will come to pass. Because you opened your mouth and spoke. Ah, ah. You just sit down in your house and expect a destiny helper to help you. Who dash monkey banana? Where will that come from? You mean somebody just sits down and comes to bless you. All of these things that we teach brothers and sisters are spiritually discerned. Say after me, spiritually discerned. Why will you ever believe that a man went to the cross for you? What if it's a lie? Was your name on the cross? You were not there. You were told he went to the cross for you. How are you sure it was for you? What if he went because he did something wrong and they just created a story to cover up? Let me tell you how you know the organs, your spiritual senses have been activated. The things of the spirit no longer become an embarrassment to you. You are not ashamed of it. Some of us still do big manism for spiritual things. Shout, lift your hands and don't fall our hands. That's someone whose spiritual senses are deadened. Does not understand. You are sick to take the communion. What is communion? I beg, I saw you baking this cake. I saw you, you even put small wine inside and you are now all of a sudden telling me it's anointed and it can cure please but let's let's we are and I'm, I'm i'm sorry to say this but even some of us pastors we stand on stage and we bastardize spiritual things we tell people look you you have common sense i mean what is uh, how can you walk around your house in the night prophesying get the police and we laugh over it and make it look as if spiritual things are nonsense If you are not a spiritual man you can't believe that somebody can come with a result that is not working and you lay hands on it and he goes back and check and all of a sudden he finds out it has changed his own cynical people are those who their organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit you saw our mother giving a testimony there are some of you here if journalists will come now you say mama open that leg let's see i don't believe it seeing is believing because many of us believe that an elderly woman at her age like this would come to stand to lie to you cynical about everything i'm showing you the need for the holy spirit in your life this is why you cannot experience speed when they see a young man all of a sudden come 
you see this gentleman he was he grew up in the village just like you and in one year God has changed his life and changed his level when people see him they say look all these young people it took me 20 years to buy my first car because you are a natural man but this guy has tapped into a supply he knows there is a system in the kingdom are we together now and you look at him and say no job you graduated with that class what are you doing whose head did you cut that you are now buying a car you are even saying you buy a car for your mother how did that happen the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit how can tithing open the heavens for you this thing is just a gimmick oh. men of god use this thing they, they eat people's money and you share the next time you can know whether people are alive in the spirit by their conversations their conversations are a window to their spirit man so never argue when you want to argue with people find out what level they are first so you don't make a fool of yourself there are people when they talk the kids just say all right god bless you it's all right you know i'm telling you all these things you are sitting down saying you are hearing god to marry well I'm this one now you are seeing we're all seeing this is how your elder sister did now she's 40 years you don't know what the elder sister believed but you know the principles of the word are you hearing what i'm saying is god blessing you yes spiritual man god gives you an instruction you finish building a house and you carry the house and go and give the house of god and say they should turn it into a missionary house is that normal no you have to be spiritual are there spiritual people in this place so why do you argue about miracles why do you argue about signs and wonders why do you argue about dreams i call this guy now i give him a word of knowledge and somebody's watching me i'm watching if somebody is telling me something <laughs> is it very easy to act like that say i'm a believer say i am spiritual i am alive to god say it i am alive to god yes the natural man i'm showing you the number one assignment of the holy spirit to take us out of that natural state and that carnal state to become spiritually alive all of a sudden you now know that prayer has power all of a sudden you now know that the word of god can direct the course of a man's life all of a sudden you now agree that if i honor my parents my day will be long all of a sudden you now know that it is possible for someone to insult you yet in spite of the insult you can still say god bless you natural people who fight and tear themselves but a spiritual man hallelujah it's a spiritual man that will see his car burning to ashes and while the car is burning he will go and lock the door and just be dancing and they say oh god i think you can't you at least quench it and sell the tire and they say it doesn't make any difference it's just my car is limited but i'm connected to a supply that is infinite i'm not irresponsible i'm only showing the extent of the abundance of the kingdom i represent spiritual man let me tell you how to know you are a spiritual man jesus gave us a test your environment will fight you because they are not used to behaving like that where will the money come from i'm tithing i'm giving god will give me an idea are you are you aware that we are in may and you are saying by december the house will be built please don't be stupid spiritual people if you are here and you find yourself cynical towards spiritual things you are always doubting can god do this it's a sign that you need to cry for your spiritual senses to be activated I remember some years ago someone told me that he doesn't really believe in miracles that he believes that every healing miracle is fake because they have not been able to bring any concrete documentation i told him i said there's no point arguing and i've had the same thing with several preachers around i told him the day the doctors look at you and say sir you have three days to live that day you will believe a miracle for sure 
you know this one way god helps us to believe him he just steps back and allows us to struggle with what we think can be him in our lives when you see how incapacitated you are outside of the spirit it will make you to embrace him thank you activation of your spiritual senses number two the second ministry of the holy spirit to a believer this is very important is revelation and understanding of scripture the second ministry listen listen scripture does not help you know the holy spirit the holy spirit helps you understand scripture are we together i am a word addict but i'm going to be correcting many things shortly and i pray that you have the grace and the fortitude to receive it because the way many people are taking their path their journey to spiritual progress they are not going to make progress that way revelation and the understanding of scripture the holy spirit himself is called the spirit of revelation the spirit of understanding when you read isaiah 11 right he is called that in fact paul prayed in ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit give it to us please ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 let's see the prayer of paul that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory will give unto you the spirit of what wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him it's a spirit it's not just a desire there is a dimension of the holy spirit that helps men to both have revelation and understanding of scripture let me tell you something if the holy spirit look up please Lord Jesus help me how do I say this now it is the Holy Spirit that inspired the writing of this remember the last session we discussed that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible the Bible did not bring the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit authored the Bible all scripture right was inspired of the Holy Ghost holy men wrote as they were moved led by the Spirit I hope you know that the apostles never had the privilege to hold this document. I hope you know the early church did not go to church with something in their hand called Bibles. Do you know that? When they went around, they did not hold a little book with 66 books. It was their testimony. The testimony of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives that have been documented to help a generation understand the character of God. The purpose of scripture is very clear he said ye err not knowing the scripture these scriptures testify of me they don't give you power in themselves the scriptures are a pointer the end of scripture is an encounter with a person a person the spirit of revelation Jesus himself told us that when the Holy Spirit came he would grant us access to the understanding of scripture say understanding of scripture there are several people let me tell you something look up please it is dangerous to study this book or any christian material without the holy spirit because you are going to gain an understanding from it but it may not be the understanding that god intends and the terrible thing this is why for many of you who have studied the bible and studied you know church history you will know that the translation of the bible was done well but it came with many mistakes um, because many of those who translated the bible did so sadly from hebrew latin greek aramaic into english they did not really consult the ministry of the holy spirit seriously many of them just consulted archaeological and theological materials and there are some of the modern translations of the bible we have now are very disturbing 
very disturbing they are a communication of carnality men attempting to interpret spiritual things in the flesh and so you have all kinds of bibles they remove several things in the bible that they feel they feel are an interruption to civilization they carefully extract certain verses from the bible they add certain things that were not there revelation of scripture revelation of scripture revelation of scripture I will come back to that but it's sufficient for you to know that if you ever want revelation the key is to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit when you study scripture with his ministry activated in your life then you will have understanding then you will have revelation number three the third ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer this is important let me spend a few minutes here guidance and direction this is one of his major ministries to the believer guidance and direction John 16 verse 13 John 16 verse 13 please give it to us and then Isaiah 30 21 John 16 verse 13 guidance and direction everyone say guidance say it again guidance and direction how be it when he not when it when he the spirit of truth is come what will he do he will guide you into how many truth all truth i know many of us don't believe this let me tell you what it means to guide can i use anybody i've been using you okay to direct is to say move when you get there turn left that's direction so you go on your own all i give you for direction is an information and then you go but this is what guidance is hold my hands let's work together oh be careful jump this be careful move this way this is guidance the bible says the spirit of truth can guide a young man who is confused no father no mother where do i go oh lord and the spirit of god says hold my hands and watch what i will do i will guide you i will guide you okay you will be in zaria for two years guidance after that you plan to go to london no it's not london it's aquaibo for one year oh god what am i doing there just follow me many people pastors leaders have have ignored the guidance ministry of the holy spirit attempting to get direction directly from the bible without him is hypocrisy and religion do you know why look at me look at me there is nowhere in the bible here that is written apostle joshua selman by 2011 and 17 you should be in Zaria it's not written here the principles of the kingdom I will come there are written but there are times your life requires hands-on customized specific information this is where he comes in you see that the spirit of truth he shall guide you into how many all truth what is all truth does it include ministry does it include your finances please help me does it include your establishment why did you leave him in church and you are around trying to look for jobs all by yourself and you never intro you go to submit proposals alone and then we don't pay attention to his ministry i think what is in vogue now is once you are in lagos or abuja about your life will be better and you transport yourself and transport your ignorance to lagos and you are on your own and a city that should bless you punishes you because he's not there with you someone else can be in zamfara led by him what are you doing in zamfara he asked me to come there and he's living like a hero in zamfara please hear me when it comes to guidance you must submit to the leadership of the holy spirit let me show you something isaiah 30 21 isaiah 30 21 read it if you're a christian one to read and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying uh-huh this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the 
when you turn to the this is the way walk ye in it uh -uh. if you go about it this way it won't work this is it oh i just want to go and do business uh -uh. go and get a master's lord what do i need for just do it i am directing samuel had the voice of god because he was lying down close to the ark you don't hear his voice if he's far from you he's a gentle spirit the secret to hearing his voice is to walk with him don't keep him far there and say lord where are you no many fathers did not seek the consent of god they just got pension two million just travel to the village you travel to the village the second day your legs stop working the third day you started working halfway the building the money disappeared did he lead you you must learn to take responsibility allow his voice guide you see let me tell you something god is not always speaking i know we say god always speaks i don't have a right to question anyone saying that but i've read my bible and i've walked with the holy spirit god does not always speak he speaks read your bible in the fifth day of the tenth month the word of the lord came the word of the lord came like a messenger god sends his word before his senses is with him when he sends it it comes your job is to wait no matter how long waiting is cheaper than paying a price unnecessary god is speaking to someone here because your your head can move you as the voice of god waiting the hardest things for believers lord you said this year you will prosper me what is this you've not even given me an idea a business idea and god says just be praying just be waiting oh god by now my colleagues have started ministry and all of them even have five five hundred members huh? i look at all of them and it's as if you didn't call me i got them born again and god says just wait if you don't hear his voice die there waiting for him are you hearing what i'm saying i'm giving someone a powerful powerful revelation man of god if he does not speak don't start the tv ministry don't say because you have money not every door that is opened is opened by god you shall hear a voice satan can open doors your force can open doors when you force a door it will open there are too many inconsistencies in the life of believers and the reason is because of that stillness stillness the holy spirit does not speak to men under an atmosphere of noise 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 lord there are 12 men around my life tell me quickly which one truly you won't hear anything the holy spirit is a master of solitude silence silence oh god five jobs speak quickly before i choose my own you won't hear that kind of thing no waiting is a sign of faith waiting is proof you believe he will come I was never taught that God can direct people. Look at how 10 years of my life has become a mess. I married wrongly. I did all kinds of things. I entered into every wrong known business. I did every kind of thing. Wrong friends. Look at my life. Lift up your eyes to him. For he will, you will arise again. And he must come to save no regrets is there hope for a tree yes there is even though it be cut up if you can lift up your eyes i just feel in my spirit god is speaking to someone here you are saying can this thing ever work my god my god an expert in changing the lives of men have you not heard of abraham i lift up my eyes to you so i will rise again you will come and say can my
church get back again yes you joined all kinds of friends in the name of ministry preaching all around and before you knew it that grace left but like Samson like Samson Psalm 23 God is encouraging someone stop crying you can't cry forever there is hope there is hope you can start afresh again I don't care what happened the Lord by his spirit is my shepherd the sheep does not have horns the sheep cannot fight its security is entirely based on his trust for the leadership of the shepherd two he maketh me everybody say he makes me when he becomes my shepherd when i make up my mind i'm not a small child yes but i will follow him sometimes we get too matured for his voice oh god you know i'm not i'm not a child again don't play all these games he makes me to lie down where for him to make me lie down means he knows where it is he searches for it and says son this is green your eyes is seem black but god says just lie down this is green pastures lord but based on what i was taught when i was in the university this is black and god says me lie down when you lie down all of a sudden it turns to green and people say how did you get it uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. every wise man knows the power of the leadership of the spirit you can't fake his leadership your life will be too ugly to pretend he's the one leading you a sign that is not leading you is perpetual absence of beauty and glory in every area of your life he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 quickly help us media he restores my soul all these are things that happen when he's shepherd he can be your lord you will not benefit from this you can make him your shepherd that if you are leading me lord i will follow You need to see how I talk with the Lord and I tell him Lord I'm not going from here brothers and sisters I can tell you how many people have given nice proposals wonderful things for the ministry to do but I know you ask everyone who is close to me if God does not speak I'm not going anywhere if after 30 years God does not speak this is where we remain as a ministry are we together i'm not under pressure to show ministry is growing everything that has happened here is a product of his wisdom the messages that have blessed people around the world it was a simple direction from god do not upload your videos do not sell your audios not at this season put them free online i will cause it to move like an angel to the nations of the earth look what god has done today you see when he speaks to you foolish things can bring powerful results because his voice is upon it he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake for yeah even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death how you got there is not important <laughs> The most important thing is that you are there the valley of the shadow of death what happens i will fear no evil why is it because i already know what will happen no you are with me although i'm in the valley if your voice is still with me then i'm safe thy rod and thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies because i am close to you i enjoy the fringe benefit of being anointed with oil and then my cup runs over. guidance believers please hear me let's return back to the place where the voice of god becomes the timing of our lives don't allow this scientific living fool you young man 
you are 30 years by now you should have three cars you should have three cars you should be married you should have um uh, what are some of these things again you should be in i mean i mean you you have a masters in etc etc the voice of god will make you look like a fool for a moment but the beauty and glory that will rise from his voice will shock people and they will say how did you do it I remember when we started out in ministry many people thought we were fools many people thought we were idiots but look at his wisdom look at his grace look at the mighty things that he has done you are here today as a product of his voice who will be in your life because you had well pray one minute lord correct my hearing i am determined to hear you i am determined to hear you lift your voice and say lord i no longer argue with your voice if you don't speak i'm going nowhere there is a way that cement right inside and outside make sure you are talking to the lord there is a way that cement right for a young man but the end thereof are the ways of death there is a way to make money that seems right there is a way to marry that seems right there is a way to get connection that seems right there is a way to do ministry that seems right but the end thereof will leave you with pains and regrets but when he leads you his voice comes with speed his voice comes with direction his voice comes with direction The fourth ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Are you learning something tonight? The fourth ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is renewal and transformation. Write this. I want to teach you something powerful and then we pray. Renewal and transformation. Renewal and transformation. Transformation. Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen. But we all. Second Corinthians three verse eighteen. But we all, not we some, as many who are interested, is is the destiny of everyone. But we all, with open, unveiled face, beholding as in a glass the glory of God. The glory of God is the Holy Spirit. He's called the glory of the Father. He says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is responsible for the transformation of men. What is transformation? A change of state that is caused about by a change of beliefs a change of values a change of paradigms listen carefully one of the major ministries of the holy ghost in the life of a man is to cause renewal renewal of your mind romans chapter 12 from verse 1 i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that he present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto lord which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 he says and do not be conformed the word conformed is the word pattern do not be patterned after aeon the the word world there is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the age do not allow yourself there is a pathway young people are taking that will land them in failure there is a way people are taking that will cause them to be mediocre in business in ministry whatever it is it says but be what transformed how through renewal transformation the process that makes you become like christ experientially is called transformation transformation the bible challenges us to have the mind of christ challenges us to cultivate the mindset philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you the word let is permit allow authorize this mindset this thinking this ideology 
This is the reason why the ministry of the word is important. Now let me tell you something about the word of God. While I was preparing the Holy Spirit kept drumming in my spirit to correct this. I want to correct something now. The confusion that has come and has been in the body of Christ for a long time as to where the ministry of what we call the word and the ministry of the spirit because it's, it's, it's a thing of confusion for a lot of people now that i'm talking about the holy spirit in transformation many people are saying i, I think it's just the word of god there is a system and this is what i want to teach you listen there is the word of god as a person understand this are we together john 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word there is the word of god as a person say the word of god as a person we know him our dispensation knows him as jesus are we together we call him jesus the bible calls him the word of god revelations 19 13 the man upon the white horse riding had a name his name is the word of god give it to us please revelations 19 yeah i believe verse 13 it should be revelations 19 13 let's look at it and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood what was his name is the word of god his name has always been the word of god so there is the word as a person his name is jesus we know him as jesus jesus is the name that was given to him when he wore a human body angels don't call him jesus in heaven they don't call him jesus that, that's a discussion for another time the only time in the angel mentioned jesus was simply telling mary his name he shall be called this they don't call him jesus read your bible in heaven they don't call him jesus every time they call him jesus is because they are relating with man so that we are not confused as to whether there are many of them he is the word of god a person but there is the word of god as a testament as scripture as the bible the testifier of the person this is it look up there is the word of god as a person but there is the word of god as scripture a testament jesus said that scriptures testify of him what we call the word of god as scripture is a compendium of the dealings of god with man to the end that we may understand the system of god's kingdom and see here by the help of the holy spirit the character of god in dealing with men to understand his system his person his agenda the word of god as a person the word of god as a testament a written document that speaks about the life the power the realities of heaven now listen to me you are transformed by scripture but only when the breath of the holy spirit is upon it when the holy spirit does not breathe upon this this did not fall from heaven this was published by zondervan or published by any of these people they may not even be born again they just published a book i hope you know that 66 books are the ones that are given to us but there are many extra biblical materials that are still the historical documentation of the apostles are we together now so there is the word of god as a person the christ himself there is the word of god as a testament what we call scripture listen carefully scripture in itself cannot do you anything now this is the problem we embrace scripture yes we call it the word of god yes it is a testament testifying of christ but it should lead you scripture is only useful when the holy spirit is participating in the process of opening it up if you open scripture just by yourself you will be like the scribes the pharisees the sadducees so the unity of scripture and the spirit is what produces the living logos the rema of god it's not just to think that okay because this is the bible many people sit down and then they can look at this this is only as hallowed 
as the ministry of the Holy Spirit makes it in your life. Otherwise, this is just an ordinary book. An ordinary book that archives the teachings of this man we call Jesus. The Bible in itself cannot do you any good. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit breathing upon the word, giving life to it. So everything you see in the Bible, he empowers you to believe it act upon it and delivers the result he is the power behind scripture the holy spirit is the power behind scripture you have to believe this there is the word of god as an information as a testament that reveals the life and the principles of the kingdom listen i've said it but let me say it again this words in themselves only educate you they can't transform you that's why a lot of people do devotional without the holy spirit and at the end of it they finish and they close the devotional many people do bible studies even in church there are many churches that do bible study for decades but there's no transformation in the lives of the people you know why because we're only doing an exegesis on a spiritual document in fact even what we call confession um, I wrote something down here I said confession of scripture without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit is mere psychology confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is mere psychology It's the same thing that happens when you go to a yoga class and they are helping you to be able to train your mind to have some kind of transcendental experiences what gives life to your confession is that the Holy Spirit is back of it. Otherwise, you are just speaking nonsense. We mock ourselves and just speak ah, this and that, this and that. We jack ourselves and we ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Words generally are powerful, but they do not bring your desired effect until they are directed by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is mere psychology. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 we see that the Lord spoke the word. But the Holy Spirit was there before the word was spoken. Not after, not during. The Holy Spirit was there hovering around. Don't invite him after you have spoken everything you want to do. And then you say Holy Spirit if there is any space for you. No. transformation part of the ministry of transformation is to produce in you the character of the spirit Galatians chapter 5 you read from verse 16 down to 22 but for time's sake let's go to verse 22 Galatians 5 22 look at what the Bible says but the fruit of the spirit in other words the recreated human spirit that is in alignment with the holy spirit should produce these effects love joy you cannot love except by the spirit you can be emotionally attached to a person or a thing that's a natural thing even animals do it but you need the holy spirit to love agape undeserved love how about joy the bible calls it joy in the holy ghost joy unspeakable and full of glory he says rejoice in the lord always it's impossible to do this he says again i say rejoice a life of joy is a product of his presence when you are ever joyful is a sign that the transforming power of the spirit is at work in you brothers and sisters let me tell you when you see people joyful it's not because everything is working it's just because the spirit of god they have learned to walk with the Holy Spirit. There are people here seated right now as I talk to you. They've had bereavements. They've not even buried the people. But you see them happy. They will be the first to hug you and shake you after service. Excessive sadness, dullness is a sign that you are walking in the flesh. So when they send you pocket money, when you come for koinonia, everybody knows that it's the end of the month. You got something. Or if your salary lands, Help me Nigerians, as soon as your salary lands, everybody knows. You dance in church and you do everything. When you stand with your tie to you wave it, everybody should see. But the moment they don't pay to see everybody, say, please clap. I beg Jerry, say, is he not enjoying? 
she'll come and face what I'm going through. No. Everybody say, I will be ever joyful. Yes. It's a product of the Spirit. Be so joyful that men will be surprised when you tell them what you are going through. Because they'll say, I never knew. Pastor, you mean you've been going through this? This is what you've been going through for the last three years? Yes. Joy. Unspeakable. Full of glory. Don't pull your mouth and frown and you get up in the morning. Good morning, sir. No joy. <laughs> Somebody was supposed to give you a job. You even gave testimony in advance and implicated yourself and then the job didn't come. Hi, oh God, is this how you disgrace me? So now I'm, I'm going to come for coinon. How will they? <laughs> Joy. I am ever joyful. I'm a very, very joyful person. It doesn't mean that people do all kinds of nonsense and foolish things around my life all the time. But I'm ever joyful. When I see people who are happy and joyful, they look beautiful. They look wonderful. Regardless of what they are going through. Joyfulness is not irresponsibility. It's a sign of faith that you know things will change. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. That's why when I saw that our mother singing a song and joyful, oh dear. What a wonderful mother. Some of you just come here and say, look. I'm, I'm sad. Uh, we thank God for the miracle. What then is the testimony? He gave me two injections. And uh, the needle almost broke. But God gave me a miracle. And we don't even know you are finished. You just say, ah, you are finished? That's it? What then is the miracle? Laughter doeth good like medicine. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, or her, laughter do it good. Look at me. Prophesy to your neighbor and say, please, don't carry a load on your head God is not giving you. Some of us, you are 20 years, you are looking as if you are 90. What's the problem? I'm the one sponsoring myself now, what I said. Which of you, by worrying, can add... Are you aware that I have three children? We didn't plan for the third one, it just came. So what? <laughs> School fees is now 50,000. I don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Who is getting the high blood pressure? No. Don't put tension around your life. Say myself, relax. God is in control. Say it myself, relax. God is in control. Let me tell you what the devil will tell you. He said, don't mind this nonsense. Apostle asked what we eat after this program. We, we, we know ourselves. Finish coin only, I'm waiting for you. Listen, remember what we spoke about carnally, to be carnally minded. What does it take God? Have you not seen people walk to others and say, look, Emeka, come. God said, I should give you 10 naira. Take one drink tea with it. You don't believe God can do that. Say, I am not popular in Koinonia. Who is talking of popularity? Didn't he say, God said, the all-seeing eye of God that can locate you and bless you. Don't always think people have to bless you with strings attached. Not everybody is a bad person. There are genuine people who can walk to you and say, God just instructed me. They will even allow you to explain it. Who are you, sir? I'm just obeying God. May that happen to you after this service. Please give it to us again. We're hurrying up now. Fruit of the Spirit. Let's find somewhere to tie it up. Peace. 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 Are you peaceful? Boisterous. Worried. Long suffering. Another word for patience. There are too many impatient people. Listen. You have to learn it. Don't say we are like that in our family. We are too impatient. You call somebody, Uncle, will you send the money? He says, call me a little later. After 10 minutes, he says, Uncle, it's me again. I hope you are not offended. Of course he's offended. 10 minutes. There are some of us, it's like, you know how Parkinson's disease is. We, if, if, if we, there, there is such tension. You advise yourself, create images and get tense by them. You need to have patience. 
Lord, I thank you. I know that the devil wants to confuse me and put pressure in my life now, but in the name of Jesus, I will wait for the promises of God. Nigerians are too impatient. Too impatient. That's why we destroy ourselves overnight. The blessings God creates, we, we destroy it overnight because of impatience. Gentleness. I don't care what tribe you come from. I don't care who trained you. I don't care where you were. You have to change and trust the Holy Spirit to re-engineer you to become gentle. It is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. A believer should be known for gentleness. To be gentle doesn't mean to be a clown. Are we together now? You know what we call gra gra. Hello? That's the best way I can. You know what we call gra gra. You are into everything you want to. That kind of life. You will sap your energy, profitless labor, the Bible calls it. The labor of the fool, he says, where yet every one of them. Some of us are not gentle. They say we are sharing Zobo. Immediately you come, where, where, where are we? Before I scatter this place. You are letting a bad attitude. You go for weddings. They say everybody just walk, they are coming. You are impatient. First you are trying to be gentle. Later you say this thing, you know, we won't get it. You push everybody around. You are not reflecting. Listen, listen. You are not reflecting the character of one who the ministry of the Holy Spirit is at work in his life. This gra gra life has destroyed people. Say from today. Prophesy, say from today. I receive grace from God by his spirit to be notably gentle. Say to be notably gentle. Once you find yourself fighting over everything, you are not gentle. Fighting over scholarship, fighting over withdrawing money, ATM, fighting over getting fuel, fighting over buying kerosene, fighting over the battle. <laughs> goodness, goodness, benevolence, the ease with which you supply joy and beauty to others is a measure of your goodness. It's a character. It's a dimension of God's glory. Goodness. A quality of benevolence. The ease with which you release things to bless others is a measure of your goodness. Giving is part of an expression of goodness. Some of us, you see my hand? Look, look at me. What is this? What is this? What did you say? I, I'm not getting what you're saying. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I heard what you are saying, but anyway, I'm the one teaching. Just follow my hands. Are you seeing this? This is how many of us, though tongue talking, this is a reflection of our understanding about, please keep it there, keep it there, media, about goodness. Someone can be dying, sir. Of course, you are not called to feed the whole world. You are not called to, you are not Jesus. But you should be able to make a difference. You can sit down with 100,000 and your roommates are crying for one cup of rice so that they can cook as a room, not even as individuals. And you just sit down and say, Kai, you know the way this country is. You come out quietly. Listen, don't laugh. I'm very serious. God is working on us. This is our year of triumph. You must change. You smuggle yourself quietly down to PZ. Enter Peter's. Eat quietly and close your mouth as if, as if nothing happened. And return back. If nobody has told you, the Holy Spirit is telling you now, it's very bad. Now, it doesn't mean, please let me balance this. It doesn't mean you go around inconveniencing people because I said they should be good. Because there are people whose lives are a perpetual nuisance to everybody. You go to people's house, go around begging everybody for money, telling lies. I've had people use over five, six different phone numbers to call me as different people looking for money. You see that? Truthfully speaking, I'm saying it, thank God I'm, I'm speaking and it's, and, and it's on air, people are following. So let's, let's balance it. Being benevolent, 
It's not that people come and stand and say it's a right. Apostles say anytime I cry, you should answer no. Learn the principles. Get financial dominion. Get the wealthy place. Meet Ejimi for impartation. Find, find ways of exiting that realm of suffering. Don't inconvenience people. Please hear me. If you are here and you are used to going to people's homes and becoming a nuisance to parents, workers, and responsible people who are making a meaning out of their lives, you have to stop it. You have to stop it. Don't go to people's homes expecting they must give you money. You must go and fetch rice when you go to their house. They must give you yam. Who are you? No, you don't behave like that. Learn to release. Open your hands and you will never be poor. You close your hands, you cannot even receive. It is only when what is in your hands is given. Some of us are really stingy. You are stingy, you are greedy and you are selfish. You have to change. Once it's not you consuming it to hell with anybody. No. You can't be that desperate for things that you are inconsiderate about the feelings of others. Oh, I came to buy 10 bottles of water and sir I'm so thirsty it's just one more I'm sorry oh God will help you and you pack your 10 bottles and go you are very very heartless you cannot even say okay let me keep one for you I came before you I came before you many people will hear what I'm saying and say he's just talking nonsense remember I've taught you when you hear people talking these are the things that make your life excellent goodness let's finish up faith or faithfulness really the rendition there is faithfulness the quality of consistency and stability faithfulness it's a name that god is called he's called faithful and true 23 please meekness another word for this is humility another synonym is teachability two words combined meekness is a product of humility and teachability when you bring humility and teachability it produces meekness the capacity to learn the capacity to submit yourself to knowledge and information regardless of what you already know many people are not meek the bible says that we receive with meekness the engrafted word temperance another word is self-control a better word is self-restraint look at me let me teach you something not everything having said talked about giving not everything is acceptable there are some things collecting it is collecting your bet throwing away your bet right there are pastors for instance you don't have self-control you step into people's homes you know that this home the highest salary here is twenty thousand but you see them packaging hundred thousand to give you it's not like it's an instruction from god you are happy you get into a house three bottles of wine chicken and the rest please is there pepper i i always like pepper you are not a responsible pastor don't act insensitive to people as though you are not aware no say myself, myself. Behave. behave one more time myself, myself. behave there is a time to collect there is a time to say thank you there is a time to pray on the seed pr pray and sow it back preserve your honor huh? there is a time to know that uh -uh, this is not collectible there is a time to restrain your mouth many of us have entered trouble we are still trying to manage today because our mouths were careless you opened your mouth and spoke over an information you were not sure of later you found out it was a lie now you are in trouble do you know you can earn a living just speaking correctly yeah there are wrong things you utter with your mouth about people or to people that can cost you five years are we together now school of ministry yesterday we we're watching fella durotoye in one of our we're on leadership and then we we're watching fella durotoye and he said something uh, okay no no not school of ministry i was actually watching him personally and he said something he said will your life become a key for your children or a padlock there are people you mention them they say you know him leave this office now i was going to help you but god over my dead body leave this office even god man 
they won't give you there are others they say i would have driven certain people but because of this your mouth if you cannot control your mouth to speak well especially about people if it is not good keep quiet are we together yes you say anything anyhow and you see let me tell you something about life come darling come two of you come watch this do you know that i can hate this lady and at the moment me and her are fighting are we together now me and tosin are not close but simply because two of us hate her we can partner together listen now while i am enjoying the friendship with her to hurt this person i reveal many secrets about me that should not be said and then after the fight is now finished one day two of them will now come and be friends against me and then you say i have a confession that day <laughs> they are an apostle it's only god this is the foolishness that many people have chained themselves you chain your eyes your hands your leg you kept yourself in one place when you have a track record of sowing seeds of discord when you have a track record of not being self-controlled many of you revealed certain things and thieves came to rob your house you just went around and said you can't imagine for the first time i saw ten thousand dollars and so one guy is drinking <laughs> minerals close to the shop and listening ten thousand dollars my father brought it new from the bank and the guy is listening say in fact let me tell you something it's just that i'm humble we live in so 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 and the person just calls his friend in the night they kill your father take the money some of us somebody likes you instead of you to keep quiet and pray he has not even said anything the whole world and he just hears and says no 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 i can't i'm not ready for this scatter your 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 breakthrough are you learning something now someone secretly called you and said i know you have two carryovers but i am the lecturer and i'm a fellow believer i'm not talking of um maybe sleeping with you to bribe that's not what i'm talking about just the favor of god and he says oh you come for koinonia i'm also a lecturer okay because of you you had 37 let me see how i can upgrade it for you to 40 but i'm doing it just for you you see a wise person you go and thank god and the next thing you go around saying ha ah, you know this koinonia the lecturers they are very nice so what did you get in the other do you know this man did this and the next thing you hear rumors that something happened between two of you and you are trying to argue telling everybody nothing happened a fool even when he's silent is considered wise please learn this lesson our time is gone we are going to pray but i want you to learn thank you thank you you must know when to say what you must know when to go where you must know when to go where some of you have entered places that they threw you out and you will never enter there again except through favor because you did not understand self-control praise the lord two people are walking two people are walking and all of a sudden another person sorry another person comes you know to talk to maybe me and all of a sudden you just come what are you saying whereas that person is a very great man somewhere you did not know how to respect your boundaries there are some of you you sit down i'm teaching you practical things you are sitting down in somebody's house and a senior executive comes somewhere you don't need to be told to stand up there it's not weakness it's called self-control are we together your parents are discussing destiny issues you just pass and say ah uncle i had you i was passing no i'm teaching you very simple things that can make your life adorable you don't do that there are times that somebody can pick a call in your presence you know that this is too confidential you can gently diplomatically just throw somewhere and allow them have their privacy they don't have the courage to tell you to leave but you should have the brain to leave they will respect you enough are you becoming wiser tonight self-control temperance self-control you are angry your father spoke about something maybe your friends came and lied and your father just called you Dow! just slapped you 
you are an adult but i will slap you and then later they discover that you were innocent and you see that you are boiling should i slap this one back should i should i revenge i can't be a fool like this listen that's when we know whether the holy spirit is lord over your life because i'm rounding up with this i've seen believers do foolish things when a believer fights his fellow person boxing people because of differences truly the holy spirit is not at work in your life listen i'm not a fool people offend me all the time you cannot imagine but when you sit down and say see i know we are all koinonia members i'm going to show you that what a woman can do a man can do better you now want your hand punch the person unfortunately that's what many men do to their wives beat the wives and then later say why did you annoy me you know that i have temper it's, it, you need deliverance there is nobody who has temper that is a quiet issue don't say elijah had temper he was in the old testament john the baptist tried it he died in the new testament there are things you do you will not go scot free this issue of temper stop it when it's time for us to pray now you are going to pray and say lord i must respect my wife you are in a relationship two weeks into the relationship you fought over, over ten times what kind of uh, uh, um, love love are, are, are you people doing are we together there are couples as you are joining them by evening wedding night they are already fighting fighting over money fighting over gifts fighting over whose parents brought what some of us parents please let me encourage us let's not sow seeds of discord in our children by planting hatred for others you are in a compound of 10 people you create a team from house 4 to 7 is you are the team house 1 and 2 you are the ones fighting against that thing will not profit both of you fire to fire ends both people in ashes say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to control myself self-control self-control self-restraint a word spoken in due season knowing what to do knowing what not to do knowing how to not overstep your bounds somebody gives you access and says look enter a shopping mall and shop at my expense <laughs> you just clean your hands and say today is it thank god this is favor this is how some of you have abused privileges somebody gave you his phone to call you have 200 naira in your own phone but you spent 1000 in his own phone that's not wisdom are we together self-control how about wearing people's clothes today the shirt you wear is not your own tomorrow the trouser is not your own next tomorrow i like your watch can i wear it stop it covetousness is part of lack of temperance please believe what i'm saying i know some of you are offended stop it that you see if your eyes see it something drives you i must get it no you will die young if you do it that way oh this lady my level wearing this kind of hair wearing this kind of clothes i must do it you don't have self-control someone met me one time and said apostle there is a there is a kind of suit now there is a trend that they are doing i said i don't know who they are i wear what i want i'm, I'm not i'm not anti-civilization but nobody puts me under any pressure to say okay this is what um, somebody was telling me the other time he said now uh, this, that that suit is now pencil pencil trouser and no socks <laughs> i said what what the what what the what the heck if i catch myself <laughs> i don't have a problem look 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 go ahead do your stuff i don't i don't have a problem but if i catch myself and they say if i catch us if i catch myself finally the last ministry of the holy spirit thank you daniel empowerment 
the last ministry of the Holy Spirit. There are many more, but I broke them into these sections because they are relevant for us. Activation of spiritual senses, revelation and understanding, guidance and direction, renewal and transformation, and then empowerment. Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 4 talks of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to empower. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit to empower. Acts chapter 10 verse 38, sorry I'm hurrying up, talks of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to empower. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing. What is empowerment? Causing God's ability to walk in and through you is called empowerment. Empowerment is causing God's ability to walk in and through you. Mary said in Luke chapter 1 verse 34, speaking with the angel, when the angel came and began to speak to her, oh this and of glad tidings you shall have a child and so on and so forth she said how shall these things be how shall it be and the angel said this is how it will happen the power of the highest will overshadow you how will this year be a year of triumph for you the power of the highest will overshadow you how will all of a sudden in one month you step into a dimension that you have never stepped into the power of the highest overshadow the holy spirit is still in the business of empowering people please listen the gifts of the spirit the fullness of the spirit dimensions of the anointing rivers of his power and his grace it is still available for the end time church there is darkness everywhere there is need to forcefully advance the cause of the kingdom and it will require empowerment everybody say empowerment if you reject the holy spirit you reject empowerment you can have a bottle of anointing oil in your house that's not empowerment if you reject his ministry he is the secret behind the empowerment in my life he is the secret behind the empowerment in this ministry i am happy i am very very proud of him He's done more things in and through my life that I can ever dream of. I remember years ago when the Lord was telling me I will use you and you will be so mighty. Apparently I knew he was going to do it but I didn't realize the extent. Look what he's done in my life. Look what he's done in your life. Some of you when you came here months, years ago, you were absolutely ordinary people. But look how he's transformed you. The Holy Spirit was given to us by God to help us. He is the helper. He is the comforter. He is the spirit of truth. He is the guide. He is an advocate. He is a standby. He is a strengthener. He is a creator. He is a revealer. He is a preserver. The Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 16, please. Mark chapter 16. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16. Verse 20. Mark 16, verse 20. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. And they went forth, uh huh, and preached everywhere. Read on. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following the lord walking with them not just going ahead of them it was the signs that followed them but the lord walking with them i told us that there is a dimension of the holy spirit in you are we together now but when you want to begin to describe the ministry of partnership with the holy spirit it's not just the holy spirit in you the name alos paracletos when you read the, the epistle of john from 14 15 16 he says and the comforter whom the father will send in my name you know he began to introduce us the word the greek word is alos paracletos one who is sent to continue what someone else was doing so the holy spirit um, as we discussed the last time is on earth today as an extension a continuation 
that everything that Jesus Christ was to the disciples who would later be apostles, he is to the church today. Are we together now? The last time we agreed that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to creation, to unbelievers, to believers. At any given point in your life, you need the Holy Spirit. As an unbeliever, you need Him to furnish the reality of the Christ in you and to plant in you conviction. You can't get convicted by yourself. It takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit. As a believer, we discussed extensively the last time several things that the Holy Spirit would do in our lives, activating your spiritual senses, revelation and understanding of scripture, guidance and direction, renewal and transformation, birthing in you the fruit of the Spirit, and um, empowerment and, and so on and so forth. But the Bible says the Lord walking with them. They were moving doing all that they were asked to do but there was an invisible personality listen carefully working with them and his assignment in that context was to confirm that means to force things to comply to force things to comply to ensure that the word of the lord upon their lips notice the bible never said confirming their word no they spoke it but it was the word of god confirming the word with signs all kinds of diverse miracles signs and wonders now you would see peter you would see john james moving alone and you would see supernatural possibilities possibilities that cannot be affordable to the natural man and the bible gives us a mystery behind it it says that there is one walking with them can i use you holy spirit walking with them now you imagine for one minute that i'm walking with this guy and um, as limited as i may seem my partnership with this gentleman is affording me certain possibilities for instance if i'm supposed to lift this and it's a bit difficult for me i can't lift it with one hand and assuming i have only one hand then you will see another don't lift it just touch it you'll see an invisible hand you are seeing only one person holding this but you are seeing the results of two people it says the lord walking with them are we together now walking with them so when it was time for peter in acts chapter 3 4 right to lift that guy at the beautiful gate it was just peter and john you thought but it was peter john and the spirit of the living god when peter held the hands of that man there were two people holding his hands it's only that one is visible and that's the one you see and he lifted him listen i want to teach you the mystery behind the strange results of many people you see ordinary men but results that are superhuman results that are beyond the scope of men I was so blessed by the testimonies of the wonderful people and those testimonies are signs they are proof that you are not alone hmm. are we together now it's one thing to be aware that the holy spirit is available it's one thing to even receive him but it's another thing to walk with him Walking with the Holy Spirit is an entire aspect of the believer's life. There are many people filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, but they have not mastered the art of partnership. Let me show you a scripture. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. Isaiah 48. Thank you. You'll come back shortly. Isaiah 48 verse 16. Isaiah 48 verse 16. I want us to read it. It's projected. One to read come near unto me hear ye this i have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was and there am i now i want you to read this is the part i want us to read together one to read and now the lord god and his spirit has sent me who sent you the lord god and his spirit other version says the lord god alongside his spirit that means the lord did not send you alone he sent you and attached the holy spirit like i would send you to the bank um well it's not a good analogy but let's let's just assume i would send you to the bank and give you an atm machine 
that ATM machine is what will give you the capacity to be able to withdraw money. You can go to the bank on your own. You can stand before the machine. But you need another agency outside of you. This is the mysterious yet simple reason, <laughs> result. Um, um, how do I put it now? Um, um, factor, that's the word I'm looking for. Behind the results, the mysterious results of people. You're looking at Koinonia for instance and you're seeing amazing things. That's why we say it is by the Spirit. By the Spirit. It's only in partnership with the Holy Spirit that certain things can be done. Listen, human beings are limited. It's a revelation I want you to get used to. No matter how intelligent, no matter how educated, no matter how civilized, there is only so much the three-dimensional realm can afford you. It takes an understanding that your victory and my victory your triumph and my triumph in life is exclusively non-negotiably a product of my partnership with the holy spirit understanding him his ministry and learning how to align and then you will produce wonders wonders that will shock you jesus himself the bible tells us that when jesus walked upon the earth for 30 years ladies and gentlemen his life was as ordinary as anything the living logos the word of god we never saw him prophesying to anyone doing anything no he was just in the temple learning like any other student nothing ordinary extraordinary about his life and then the bible tells us that one time he went and saw john baptizing people and when he was baptized watch this the heavens became open over him and a voice spoke this is my beloved son etc etc then the bible says the holy spirit drove him to the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days and so on and so forth satan tempted him and afterwards the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit the next time we hear of jesus christ is turning a city upside down the next time we hear of jesus cripples the dead rising the sea the elements of creation obeying him and they asked jesus what the secret was and he was not ashamed listen listen carefully jesus himself revealed to us a very deep secret in john chapter 15 john 15 please give it to us john 15 john chapter 15 my hell you most high i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman so we are seeing that there is a participation of multiple people the results that we saw in the life of jesus saw in the life of the early church jesus is telling us that this is not just a one-man show some are visible some are invisible but there are forces there are personalities working together to make this thing happen verse 2 every branch in me that beareth not fruit it taketh away so branch in me branch in me that means he is different from the branch he said i am the vine you look at a tree but there are specifications all of them are not doing the same thing there is one responsible for producing the fruit there is one responsible for making sure the branch is healthy this is called partnership it's called partnership a participation a distribution of assignment like a husband and a wife he supplies money take ten thousand naira and he sits down happily in the parlor you would think he's irresponsible but he has played his part and the wife goes to the market buying all kinds of things and goes to the kitchen and you see her working so hard you will think the man is wicked wait until it's now time for the child's school fees you see the woman singing praises in the morning while he's calculating how to raise the money partnership and love is so powerful that sometimes they help themselves ah this is where the mercy of god comes in there are times that the, the woman may be incapacitated and the man says look i know that it is your role to work in the kitchen but i love you so much we are a team if you fail i still fail so i can come into the kitchen 
that's why you see the holy spirit sometimes can move even beyond the jurisdiction of his work and step into your life and you see things you know that you did not finish keeping the principles that should produce the results but he came in spirit of god are you learning something now the lord and his spirit has sent me how many people in this world you see people say i'm alone i don't even know what is happening that statement is a product of ignorance listen very carefully that statement hear me please is a product of ignorance it looks like a well-meaning lamentation over the vicissitudes of life but that is a communication it's an embarrassment it's a every time you act helpless you make the holy spirit look irresponsible listen um let me use a lady to sing come watch this now we are going maybe to the market and there is a distribution of work and i'm saying tosin work with me you are going to help me make some purchases are we together now now look at this please if we get to the market and let's say we are going to buy a cow and we stand and there are several cows they check the cows and we find out that these cows are healthy cows we are ready to buy it and all of a sudden tosin is shaking are we together are you following my my example tosin is shaking and then the people are asking her madam why are you shaking and he says her i i just hope that we'll be able to buy this cow who is who will take the shame i'm standing there as a responsible personality i was the one who asked her to go and buy a cow it was not her opinion are we together now and i'm standing and only because they said the cow is 150,000, she's shaking two things will cause that one she does not know me or number two is an act of rebellion she has done something that makes her perceive that my partnership has been cut away now fear is as a result of her consciousness that she is not holding the money in her hands it doesn't matter who holds the money the most important thing is let payment be made you see why we have a lot of fear oh god you are leading me to do certain things but lord based on what i have there are things god does not give you it is your partnership with him he is the one who does the payment but the flesh wants to hold the money by yourself lord i want to be let it be that the anointing is like a charm if there is an anointing where is it that's why we like oil that's why we like things we can hold and the holy spirit says this journey is by faith if you are going to pray for the sick there is nothing on your hand you are going to have to believe that i'm there partnership let me tell you this is my mindset i never walk alone you hear all of those results human beings cannot produce it no not with the the stringent academic um system that we have no sir partnership so she's standing unable to pay and i am more than enough to buy the whole cows there are we together but she has a price there's a there's a role that she has to play and this lady can be shaking there embarrass me and then without consulting me she can tell the cow seller sorry we accept an embarrassment we came here to disgrace ourselves it is not within our power and she reverses the interesting thing about the holy spirit is he's so gentle he will follow you so your limitation is not his limitation your limitation is your inaccurate understanding of the resources that are resident within him you are only looking at what you have listen 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 the greatest dimension of the faith work of a believer is not to receive things is to walk with the spirit you will not always receive there are things that will remain with him but he will walk he will be the doer you see this receiving is a nice thing and there is a dimension to it but most of this sense of reception is a communication of unbelief we just want to be in control is our obsession for control lord now that um 
you are sending me to this place how am i sure that you are going to help me father let somebody send me an alert now let me know i have my transport fare going and coming and the money to rent the venue and god will say no we are together and they say god i love you but um you are not the one who will pay the rent you see we make those kind of stupid statements lord i want an alert watch this if you get an alert now then you are happy and he said lord let's go and he says no it's difficult for me to take glory now because the alert is already in your the miracle is not your receiving the alert the miracle is walking with him entering a city where nobody knows you and you say she brakataya the spirit of god we're in this place and all of a sudden your trust puts pressure on him and a stranger comes from nowhere and says sorry it looks like you are what is the issue and he said well um i'm just coming here say what's your name are you sam i had a dream last night and i saw you are you the one that's how he's glorified so while you were sleeping the other part of the equation the spirit of god was already making arrangements that he did not inform you does not mean he did not do it this is where our unbelief is we always want god to give us all the details before we trust him no the mission is follow me follow me follow me lord you are sending me to zamfara what how are we, how are we going to do this you must give me the details when will i marry how many children will i have will it be a girl or boy show me everything first and god says me i created the heavens and the earth i left a compendium of my integrity to convince you that i am able will i disgrace myself just because of you and we say lord keep talking all i know is that if i don't see it and handle it if you pay attention to what i'm sharing with you today your life will be a wonder yes because when people look at you they are only looking at the smallest part of the equation young Cho calls him my senior partner we are partners in this but i'm not alone so where you see me physically weak there is a mighty invisible force standing to back me you want to kill me you kill both of us you see that you want to cost me you cost both of us i agree that i can fail on my own but with god with him with him quarter to failure he will appear and manipulate the equation and you know that no 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 based on what this brother did you are supposed to fail but with the introduction of this personality he will alter everything change everything believers the partnership with the holy spirit is not for men of god the partnership the ministry of the spirit i will tell you what it is shortly but the partnership with the holy spirit is not some kind of thing for preachers so many people say wow this guy is called into the miracle ministry why not so you go ahead and try to know the holy spirit no the holy spirit was sent listen to me carefully as a strengthener as a comforter as an advocate the revealer of secrets he said then the secret was revealed to daniel until it was revealed he did not know cheap battles we have lost cheap battles in life because we've been fighting alone our parents have been fighting alone they are still fighting alone that's why people carry their certificates and say no no based on this certificate it must be and then when they are coming to god for help they don't just say god come and help me they say god see i may graduate so use it and god says please when i want to move you don't tell me how to move your job is to believe that i move don't hold a certificate and think that is the basis of me blessing you lord i have seven children they are all useless use them to bless me and god says uh -uh. i can save your children and lift your children but if i want to bless you it has nothing to do with using your children i can use anybody including your enemy the ministry 
of the spirit and the lord walking with joshua selman and the lord walking with koinonia producing results that you know are not human producing results you know defy the wisdom of men whenever you see an extraordinary manifestation of wisdom it's not just by studying no the holy spirit you can have knowledge but to create changes it takes power it takes the introduction of someone else that is not you someone once asked me a question a man of god he asked me a question and he said man of god how do you gather supposedly the best of everything how do you get worshipers that are so nice protocol people that are so nice is it that you apply is it that you do this and i laugh i i tell him do you think i have the power in myself to vet people and know don't forget that we are not alone spirit of god he knows how to draw them the same way he knows where your destiny helper is the same way he knows your geographic location but the trouble is this our unbelief this our unbelief we must listen we must walk this thing tonight to say lord i trust you and i believe in you he said but i know whom i have believed in and i am persuaded that he is able i am persuaded that he is able i'm persuaded that he is able I wish we had time and I, I allowed Pastor Alpha and his lovely wife to share with you the testimony of their child. How this lady gave birth. It was a, there were supernatural things that happened. He shared with me a bit of it. Let me just share one of it if you permit me, Pastor. There was a time the baby, it was like the baby was too big. Brothers and sisters, she pushed twice. The baby came out. They measured him a few minutes later on and his weight, am I right? His weight had increased shrunk came out and increased back that's not a man you can get pregnant you can't shrink a baby it takes someone else with you this consciousness of not being alone this consciousness of not being alone our carnality our our sensuality is what makes us feel because i'm alone i don't see anybody that means there is no help no he said i will lift up my eyes listen unto the hills and he said from whence cometh my help he said my help comes from the maker the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth i will not leave you comfortless don't act comfortless jesus said it i will not leave you comfortless i will not leave you comfortless apostle you don't understand my situation my father is late my mother is late i sympathize with you but brothers and sisters if you knew what the holy spirit could do in your life if only you recognize his presence and give him room give him room the holy spirit is a gentle spirit he will not bump into your life when you make the holy spirit the chief influencer of your decisions you will be amazed at the miraculous things that will come from your mind what is the ministry of the spirit write this down i'm preaching this with all passion in my heart because this is one of the biggest secrets of my life listen listen the bible says it is not good for man to be alone i know we talk of marriage this is marriage is a marriage is a borrowed is a borrowed phenomenon to represent something spiritual it is not good in other words man cannot be effective alone i will make a help suitable suitable in other words there are potentials in man but all by himself there are things he cannot do so i will make a help so when jesus sent the holy spirit as a helper is because he knows the bible says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities he knows he will face financial troubles he knows that your health will be challenged he knows there are forces in the earth he knows that the world we live in is so unfair 
unfair and he left us his spirit the ministry of the spirit is a revelation the ministry of the spirit are you writing is a revelation on how a believer through fellowship and partnership a revelation on how a believer through fellowship and partnership with the Holy Spirit will produce extraordinary results will produce extraordinary results giving glory to God a revelation of how a believer an ordinary person an ordinary villager an ordinary uneducated person an ordinary orphan an ordinary widow an ordinary widower an ordinary third class graduate can come into partnership and fellowship with the Holy Spirit and they two together always will produce extraordinary results results that defy science defy logic listen you've heard me say it here it has become an anthem that when it is listen when it is the doing of man it is ordinary and relatable but when it becomes the lord's doing it becomes marvelous in our eyes when your career is just the normal pathway every graduate takes there is nothing worthy of applause but when it becomes extraordinary and supernatural then it is marvelous and listen john chapter 15 give us verse 8 please let me show you how god takes glory john 15 and verse 8 let's read one to read hearing this is how my father is glorified read on that ye bear what that ye produce results everybody say results shout it please results listen 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 the earth only responds to one language results results the end of your confession the end of your jumping falling around the end of whatever is to be able to produce results that men can recognize it is only through the results that men can see it's a demonstration of the might of god it is results that makes you a witness it is results that makes you an ambassador you are promoting the interest of a man and you have proofs for it are we together now when your life is barren of results especially extraordinary results god cannot be glorified it's impossible for god to be glorified there is a statement that he wants to use your life to make to principalities and powers and so he takes ordinary you ordinary you i don't say that in a derogatory way i know that we are in christ but you need to understand the dynamics every time we say we are in christ understand that we are the weaker part of the equation it is his love that makes us and his grace that makes us together it's not as if you are two like two intelligent business partners one has money one is an it guru then they come together no it is one totally weak helpless failure and another infinite personality coming into partnership are we together now so never mistaking the fact that when i talk of participation i'm not talking of a participation that is something you would have done outside god for without me ye can do nothing your own participation is alignment through obedience alignment through obedience that's all you are required to do that's your part of the equation in your work with the spirit there is only one assignment as far as partnership is concerned it's called alignment through obedience alignment you align to him 
and that happens through obedience obedience is a summation of every principle every law every strategy every dictate of god as revealed by his word to commit god to your affairs it's called obedience having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete the ministry of the spirit how many preachers today pray in tongues jump up and down believe they are filled with the holy spirit but they don't work with the holy spirit they go for programs alone they even pray in tongues to be filled with the holy spirit is not the same as walking with the spirit you are working with the consciousness of partnership with him i'm standing on this stage you are only seeing one man are we together now but there are two people you are hearing one voice but there is an invisible power behind that voice that will produce conviction are we together so i look at someone and i prophesy to you and say in the name of jesus may your life change can a man tell you that kind of thing you too you i mean you are intelligent can a man talk to you and change your life no you are hiv positive go and become negative just like that what pride without the holy spirit who gave you that audacity the centurion got it right for i am a man in partnership with an authority and based on that partnership i say to one go and he goes i say to one come and he comes jesus i know that you are standing here you are a 33 year old body but mysteriously there is an ancient spirit working in you and jesus said i've not found this faith this understanding no not in israel that ordinary men can walk with an ancient spirit and produce results that are bigger than them you see ordinary men but you see god's results let me show you the partnership of the spirit it says the lord is my shepherd as a result i shall not want he says he makes me to lie down i can refuse but my own partnership is compliance to lie down in green pastures he restores my soul he guides me he never forces me he guides me guides me the first the first proof that you are walking with the holy spirit is your submission to his leadership the first proof that you are walking with the spirit write it down submission to his leadership where his leadership is not an opinion where his leadership is not a discussion you don't do things the way you want to do there is an influence submission to his leadership and thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it you can choose to refuse you can choose to argue look at me the first proof that a man is walking by the spirit is total submission to the leadership of the holy spirit lord if it be possible let this cup pass nevertheless not my will but thy will submission to the leadership of the holy spirit knowing that the holy spirit is god and according to jeremiah 29 11 it says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you say at the lord listen carefully they are thoughts of good or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means i can be led of the spirit i do not even know but i believe by faith i've taught you something about the leadership of the holy spirit let me reiterate on it watch this let me use someone come please if this guy believes with all his heart that he is being led by the spirit or led of the spirit watch this if this guy believes that he's led of the spirit are we together and this is where the holy spirit wants him to go to but 
he takes a step this direction and he's doing it innocently with all sincerity believing he's led of the holy spirit the spirit of god will take the door and put it here to make sure he passes right this is the mysterious thing about working with god perfection is not a requirement sincerity is the sincerity of your heart <laughs> so it's, it's not it's not the issue of perfection of hearing god perfection oh god no 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 you will make so many mistakes trying to discern his voice but regardless of it his integrity is committed to making sure you get to the place of destiny this is our consolation there are many times paul wrote certain things and said i speak as a man this is my opinion it's not that the holy ghost gave me any understanding this is my opinion yet all together the bible says all scriptures were inspired how many including what paul was saying an opinion of a man he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny one more time he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny listen every time god speaks to you about your destiny he speaks to you as if he's talking to himself it will be so big god will tell you white men will come you are going to take over europe and you are watching little you and you are saying god don't mock me don't mock me how shall these things be mary said seeing that i know not a man and the angel said you have asked a good question it will not happen just because you have a womb the power of the highest there is a provision i'm just giving you the information so that you will align but it won't be only you i will call you into a healing ministry oh lord i have never healed a headache don't worry your job is to believe for when he comes then you will see wonders wonders listen this is what god told me many years ago yes to walk with him the holy spirit was introduced to me in a very strange way i've shared a few of those 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 stories with you people i wish i had time i would have shared with you my encounters with the holy spirit just a little naive young innocent boy moving around and the holy spirit came like a guy who is looking for a wife ah huh? he comes to propose to you joshua selman can you walk with me and i turn you into a wonder and all your unbelief says uh -uh. based on what the newspaper and the history books told us you have to do a b c d there must be an uncle in civil defense an auntie in cbn then when you add that equation is equal to success and this stranger comes to you that you have never met and he says walk with me like a gentleman will come and hold the lady's hands and say i want to marry you it's a risk is that true and he says just believe me i don't look like it now but there are all kinds of potentials and that lady takes a risk and they begin the journey the journey of destiny 10 years later she is the wife of the person with the largest company in the whole world and you admire her no admire her risk admire the sacrifice admire that step of faith that even when she did not understand many people see what god has done in our lives today and they say apostle you are lucky no i'm not lucky no i'm not lucky no i'm not lucky it's better to even say i'm a benefactor of god's grace not luck where were you in the night when he came to me and said son trust me when he was speaking to me you were not there the same way god is telling some of us you may have come from a village you are the last born you can't speak english but just trust me and let me make a wonder out of you and many of us are saying oh god it can't work that way partnership 
when the Holy Spirit comes into your life he doesn't ask you your age he doesn't ask you your gender he doesn't ask you your education he doesn't ask you how many hours of prayer he doesn't ask you what revelation you know because all of those things are seeds they will still die no matter what the accomplishment is when a seed is big or small it will still die when he comes he says look i want you to trust me and let's walk together then he will begin to guide you he will destabilize your life into nonsense because your plans your dreams your hopes everything scatters you think you are confused but he's leading you all of a sudden brothers and sisters one more step and you are into a life of beauty and glory oh lord my plan was to marry that lady my plan was to marry that guy why have you been stopping every brother coming and god says just keep walking with me when we arrive there you will look back and all the glory will be to him partnership there are businessmen who have held his hands naive ignorant people they know nothing about business nothing about finances come they came from families that no destiny no future full of all kinds of causes and in their frustration he came to them and he said can you trust me and he said lord i don't have much oh. he says no problem i'm not asking you for much just give me your hands give me your hands <laughs> ah! and he will hold you step by step i remember when we were about to start koinonia where would you get a big venue i saw these days in the vision and i said lord there's no auditorium i know that can take people and i was praying and there he came koinonia is not your ministry koinonia is my ministry so let me guide you you are only the physical representation that they can see like a manager of a company but i am the owner let me guide you and i saw in a vision cgc how would i get the venue the venue was small but if he's leading you he will shake men he will raise donkeys he will make stone speak when he's leading you he will move all kinds of things the leadership many of us have been cheated in life because we have allowed over dependence on intellectualism to cheat us we have robbed ourselves of the simplicity and the foolishness of following him are we together yes brothers and sisters listen this battle is not your own if you leave it to the right fighter you will win you have been fighting a battle you have not this you are not I, I don't know i'm prophesying to somebody this battle is not your own it will kill you on your own it will kill you it will kill you that's the song the battle isn't yours but mine the battle isn't yours but mine god is speaking battle isn't yours but mine the battle isn't yours oh god i am 25 years i am 27 years how will i ever be established in this life no uncle to help me that's nonsense that battle is not your own you were not designed to be established by yourself there is something that establishes men listen believe me when i tell you I live a fearless life I don't live I don't live a fearless life just because I am a macho man I don't live a fearless life just because there's ten naira in my pocket I live a fear the day I discovered that I am never alone in the equation I found rest they got it very well find rest find rest look at this little boy pastor Alpha's son he knows I have a responsibility to breathe and live this man has a responsibility to feed me for as long as I remain his son many of us have become God to ourselves that's why we are being punished day and night many pastors are almost dying how do I raise money for church as if you are the one who sent yourself how do I gather members one pastor is about to leave me pastor why do you want to leave me all that is nonsense when you realize that you are not alone say I'm not alone prophesy say I'm not alone yes 
and the Lord walking with them and the Lord writing exams with them and the Lord walking with them and the Lord building that house with them and the Lord doing that business with him and the Lord working on that job someone looks at you and says you'll be a failure in life you are going to fail I will make sure I frustrate you he's talking to two people he should know who the second person is frustrate who now because we are inseparable who are you going to frustrate me or the fountain of wisdom so when you see people run oh somebody said he will kill me in the village somebody said i will never marry over her dead body all of that is nonsense it is your faith they are working on and you believe it and receive it and your life begins to there are many of us constantly requiring um endorsement by people because we do not know that the spirit of the lord makes everybody a first class personality there are no second class people with god submission to the leadership of the holy spirit let me tell you one big secret in my life i never do anything until i hear god did you hear what i just told you if God does not speak I will not carry this speaker and leave it there now the problem with many of us is we have been indoctrinated that God is always speaking I respect those opinions but based on the word of God and my experience God does not always speak he speaks but he's not like a robot talking in the fifth day of the tenth month of the tenth year the word of the Lord came 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 the patience of knowing that when his voice comes what you call wasted time is rubbish when his voice comes it will bring you speed oh God my colleagues have gone and left me I've been a graduate for 10 years what are you doing with my life most of them have even built houses let his word come when the Holy Spirit comes and says son it's time you will not walk you will fly oh no 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 he does not give you progress he lifts you Me, see this is why you see some people quiet and then all of a sudden in certain seasons they just explode and you look at them and you are like ah where did this guy come out from nobody comes out of nowhere it's a lie you just were not there during their times of dealings with the spirit if we launch a television station now all over the world for the next six months they'll say there's a channel koinonia tv my god come and see what is happening as though it just started no sir nobody just starts in on stage there is a track record of working with the holy spirit that's why you see i acknowledge him so much so much when you see me talk about the holy spirit it can annoy you i'm not copying benny him no it's a revelation take away the holy spirit from my life you will be so embarrassed by what is left it will not be worth it take away the holy spirit from my life i'm not worth your attention take away the holy spirit from my life i'm not worth your confidence but with him now you be god almighty god for you know the man you know the man one more time now you be god almighty god you know the man Listen, do you know the meaning of what you just said? You don't use human strategies. You are not a man. When he comes to hold your hands, he's not going to do the Y, the X. He's not that dull. He's called the Spirit of God. My ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts your thoughts. For as far as the heaven is, when God comes, you expect Him to move you this way. And God says, let's start going back. And He said, Lord, the destination is there. He says, I know. Just go back. Ah, ah. 
do you go back to go forward you are just leading and you turn and you find out you are there he listen he does not know the way he is the way it's not like he he just leads you he is the way he said i am the way have you learned to trust him show me what role he played in the decisions that you made show me what roles he's playing now show me the role of the holy spirit in your financial decisions show me the role of the holy spirit in your relationships marital decision show me the role of the holy spirit in your ministry show me the role of the holy spirit in your academics ask your parents that's the secret behind the failure of many of our parents we cannot see how he led them pride and arrogance i went to school i've done this i've done that and life whips them left right and center and then you find a dear poor woman in the village oh lord i may not be educated i don't have much i can't preach but lord i just have a little boy if you can use me if you can use him and god says these are the kind of people i want 10 years later at age 10 or 11 that boy is already doing wonders and the woman is there 20 years 30 years down the line he's already celebrated all around the world because an innocent woman listen there is nothing in my work with god the i know how to touch the heart of god let me tell you surrender that is the is the best language of god in his dealings with men surrender lord i can't do it lord it is not in my power i acknowledge you that's music to his ears i show you a secret to walking with the spirit surrender surrender lord i'm brilliant let me start when i hook somewhere i will employ you like a consultant and he watches you some of us have learned to die in his arms when you see me worshiping god i worship him like a fool i will roll from end to end lord what am i without you spirit of the living god you are the mysterious wisdom behind what i do when i was i was i think it was yesterday night into this morning i was just lying down and i said lord imagine the mighty things you're going to be doing today healing people blessing people imagine the thousands of people you are going to be gathering today and the lord told me something as long as you keep working with me you will see my life in your life my life in your life that's what god told me this morning for as long as you walk with me you will see my life not my hand you see a man living you know that this is another life this is another result that's why we keep going from glory to glory that's why we keep going from dimension to dimension that's why we never give credit to the flesh never give credit to the flesh now the truth is men will clap for you men will say wow you are this you are that sometimes the holy spirit will allow you don't stop them let them pat your back but a wise person will go back and kneel down and say spirit of the living god look what you've done with my life this is the way you father me i love the way you father me this is the way you father me I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. Listen, I show you a fail proof secret. Respect his voice, respect his leadership whether it is comfortable to you or not I just believe that the end is peace your mind is too small to understand the ways of god i respect him i've lost the ability to tell god no if it is the voice of god and it's the direction of god so be it ancient kings never went for war until they inquired haven't prepared the army they will either use divination or prophets or priests let us know god's opinion and god will say go 
I have given you victory. The moment he spoke, there was no fear again. Moses was confronted with several challenges. Notice how Moses will always retreat back to God. All right, nation of Israel, there is a Red Sea standing before us. I know what many of us would have done. Look, um, I'm an intelligent man. Just, just allow me. Uh, let me process this now. Moses said, all of you, calm down. Are you calm? They said, okay. He ran to God and said, God, what do I do? What do I do? Partnership. What do I do? Partnership. Remember, I said, if your presence would not go with me, I can't go. I don't want any embarrassment. And he said, look, Moses, don't be afraid. Stretch your rod. Tell the people to move forward. Moses has said, God, please, uh, can you just do something? Can you compress a cloud to become like a road? Let's use that strategy. How can you tell a man to go and part water? It's because it has happened. That's why you believe it. And all of a sudden, Moses went and, nation of Israel, let's start moving. And they looked at him. They said, you see, this idiot is back from wherever he went to he's back as stupid as always he said we should die instead of him to just say i don't have a solution he's now saying god said but there was the invisible part they didn't know the moment he stretched forth his rod signs and the lord walking with moses confirming the word with signs how about joshua went round jericho and they saw it what is the strategy of god how do we defeat a city whose fence can sit five chariots the whole of cgc from here to here was still not the fence of jericho so even if the fence turned around it will still be another fence it sank and god said let me give you the strategy walk around once everyone's for seven days the seventh day move around seven times and he went foolish enough and said guys i've gotten the strategy they went around i can imagine a nation of israel listen even if you are afraid still obey while you are complaining be obeying lord i don't think i understand but let your legs keep taking you to the place of obedience faith is not fearlessness faith is the resilience to obey him to the latter regardless of what you feel the ministry of the spirit submission to the leadership of the holy spirit number two the second dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit is walking in the might the power and the grace of the spirit walking in the might the power the grace of the spirit where it is not your strength again i can do all things philippians 4 13 through christ which strengtheneth me the word christ is not just the person alone his anointing the ministry of the spirit is a ministry where a man has been overshadowed by the power of the holy spirit where you begin to walk by another agency you are the one carrying out the physical activities but the energy the might the power the wisdom the strategy is not yours watch this if i lift this keyboard or i lift this on one hand it's understandable you look at me and feel i should have power enough as an adult to lift that is that true but when i gather these four people no don't no, I, I, you think i'm going to do that when i gather these four people and i hold them and you see me lift them you are going to say i have jazz you will attribute it to an advantage that is tied to the realm of the spirit because human beings should not do that when you see a man use his teeth to drag a car please be wise there are two people dragging that car when you see someone in the market square putting his head inside a hyena's mouth and he doesn't enjoy him you see people do it in the market or someone shoot an arrow or cut themselves with knife there are two people there are always two people a human and a spirit 
when you see an old woman say you must die there are two people talking the old woman who is the medium and the spirit speaking when you ever become alone on earth you will die it's always a ministry of truth you and the spirit of god and his power and his grace if you are not conscious of that oneness and you just drag yourself i want to go and pray for the sick how many people have died of sickness because they thought it's just because the bible said it the bible said it they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed god's word said it i believe it it settles it and you go and die because of ignorance you just go and lay hands on somebody and all of a sudden carry what is upon that person and produce casualty in your life there is the dynamics of the operation of the word it starts with the holy spirit it is his power that produces the results when you speak do you speak alone or are you just an echo of the real person speaking john said i am the voice of one crying i'm not the word but i am the voice i allow that word to find expression brothers and sisters this is the secret of this ministry you see operating under open heavens the power of the spirit the might of the spirit john chapter 3 verse 1 nicodemus comes to jesus by night and then he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man here it is no man can do these things except god be with him except god be with him no man can become fulfilled in one year except god be with him no man can defy all of these things except god be with him your results are ordinary although you look like you are filled with the holy spirit although you are praying in tongues but you have not come into the eternal consciousness of your oneness with him two people becoming one here's a statement that is made during marriage and it was god himself that made that statement therefore what god has joined let no man put that means only god can put us under what god has joined who joined you and the holy spirit please help me so the principle is still applicable what god has joined that partnership with the holy spirit no man should be able to put asunder no charm should be able to put asunder no limitation should be able to put asunder because he was joined by god it's not an opinion of man your background notwithstanding when he supplies you power when he supplies you grace you activate possibilities in your life that cannot be done by a normal human being when he does something to your brain you will now see that four points five points is not something you should sit down and dream about it is a possibility that can happen when he anoints your hands then you now know that your hands may look ordinary but you can shake somebody and change his life forever when he anoints your words then you will know that speaking is not just about grammar there is a life that flows through it and produces results i know the smartest communicators around and they are unable to do much for the kingdom it takes more than speaking good english to drag people it takes an ability he's working in me he's working in me it's God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. No matter how frail I look, God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me.
the ability of God can do is the ability of God that has put us in over 45 nations of the world not been there never been on TV is an ability of the spirit is the ability of the spirit that has brought his breath upon our teachings that are changing people around the world is the ability of the spirit the miracles and the signs and the wonders the ability the crowds that you see gathered here there is no man walk around this city you are not going to see one coin on your poster the one billboard that was put was taken away it's making it's made no difference because you see brothers and sisters there is a force it's called an akazo it's a compelling power the power of the spirit that compels men into the will of god that's the ability that will come upon you and drag destiny help us to your life as if you are charming them yes yes this is what God has done over 80 percent of the people who bless this ministry I don't know them I have never seen them with my eyes I don't know how they got the ministry account details over 50 percent of what am I saying 50 percent of the people that bless me I don't know them I've never seen them I don't know how they got my details it's God's ability when his power is upon your life he will shock you shock you they may see ordinary you ordinary you but then there is an ability of the spirit he said there is this treasure listen carefully in earthen vessels that the excellency of power might be of God the ability of the spirit working in us Acts chapter 19 please quickly I want us to find somewhere and begin to pray now Acts chapter 19 we are reading 11 down to 20 but we'll jump some verses Acts chapter 19 let's see what happened to a man when the power of the Holy Spirit was upon him it says and God who wrote the miracles please help me who wrote the miracles but who did the sick people see the sick people saw who Paul but who was doing the miracles in Koinonia who is doing the miracles but the one you can see is Joshua Selman. So you say, wow, this guy is powerful. You are not wrong. Except for the fact that when you come to me, I will redefine it. And tell you, it's true Joshua Selman is powerful. But in Christ. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick. Handkerchiefs and aprons. And the disease departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them are we together then talks about the sons of skiva and what happened to them let's go to verse 16. it says and the man in whom the evil spirit was left on them and overcame them and prevailed over them do you know why because they thought it was just about talking be healed be healed when you see a man ministering by the spirit it looks so easy you can think it's so easy till you try it that's what these guys did no partnership with the holy spirit and they wanted god's result and the demoniac pounced on them 17 we're reading down to 20 and this was known to all the jews and greeks also dwelling in ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the lord jesus was magnified and many that believed came look at this look at what the power of the holy spirit was doing and confessed and showed their deeds 19 and many of them which use curious acts mantras and scientific books books that they use with divination those things became obsolete brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver brothers and sisters 50,000 anything is money are we together mm. 20 so mightily grew the word and prevailed so mightily grew how by the results that were communicated it takes power to produce the result that dumbfound men listen you can criticize but you cannot withdraw power no you can't withdraw it from careers of it this thing comes upon you and is upon you and it remains for as long as you keep working with god it will only keep multiplying I wish I had time I would have shared with you I've not even touched so much of the things that I want to share but um, we'll find somewhere to stop tonight no notable achievement in life 
is ever done by a man alone it is always done by a man and a spirit either a demonic spirit or the spirit of the living god there is no man in his ability please hear me brothers and sisters no matter how sophisticated you are there is a limit to your ability so he empowers you and i'll tell you why he empowers you acts chapter 1 verse 8 acts chapter 1 verse 8 when you begin to read from verse 5 jesus was talking to them and then they told him they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel and he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care then verse 8 says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be what one more time one more time a witness is one who validates the claims of another are we together a witness is one who proves that the person testifying is not lying there are many things that god has said in his word and satan is saying is a lie so he empowers you to be a witness so they see a young man a young woman grace upon your life he has said i will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten the parma worm has eaten and satan says it's a lie it can't happen so god says let me use somebody as a specimen he finds someone that is 10 years backward and then he tells creation watch me now and in five months he turns that person to a wonder you know how you prove a mathematical equation and you write qed not open to debate anymore i've proven it i've said it and i've done it that's what god is about to do with someone's life there are many statements that god has said but satan is saying it's a lie watch what happens to you when his power comes upon your life listen the power of the spirit does not throw people down the throwing people down is just the impact of his presence the power of the spirit leads people to unimaginable realms unimaginable dimensions unimaginable dimensions let's look at two scriptures I saw a scripture that really 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 blessed me and i thought that we'll just look at it second second corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1 it says we then as what workers together with you like you are talking to a workforce there are times that we have the workforce meeting here in the ministry and it's just exclusive for workers so god is talking here he said we then as workers together with him say i'm a worker together with him say it again i'm a worker together with him when you are a worker with him then you will produce extraordinary results you will produce unusual results this thing i'm teaching you has no respect for gender some of you are sitting looking at me and saying can god do anything with me ah. the god of heaven that i know can turn your life around in ways that you will not imagine read from genesis to revelation he met ordinary people turn them around ordinary people turn them around ordinary jesus turned him around ordinary peter turned him around stammerer moses turned him around young fearful joshua turned him around weak feminist deborah turned her into a warrior he will not suffer my food to be moved i carry your presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me Lord, awesome just a and you are the awesome in a few minutes now we are going to begin to pray 
and you will watch him once again in action doing wonders changing lives in split seconds disease is dissolving watch this in split seconds deliverance is happening in split seconds impartations happening brothers and sisters a man cannot bless you like that to oh. learn this no but he will not suffer my food to for I carry his presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, I'm just a mortal man. I'm just a mortal man. Listen, say in the name of Jesus from today. I walk in the consciousness of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I submit to His anointing. I will never try to do anything without His anointing, without His empowerment, without the unction of the Spirit. Together with the Holy Spirit, my life becomes an awesome wonder. I know some of you think I'm just talking. Help that lady under the anointing there, please. I know some of you think I'm just speaking and making noise. No, sir. We are not teaching you cunningly devised fables. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. This is what we bring. The sickness in your body can leave because he is here. You see that? The disease in your life and all these things can leave because he is here. The oppression in your life, the retrogression, the mountain that stands before you, you have been staring at it for years. Can you shift back and let your senior partner stare that mountain for you and watch the way he will dissolve it? Your, your calling it a mountain is relative to your perception. Step back and let the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who the mountains keep like lambs before him. Hallelujah. Let's end with this scripture. Daniel 11, verse 32. I have to stop here so we'll pray. Daniel 11. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. He says, but the people that do know their God not their neighbor's god but the people that do know their god the first thing that should happen to them is capacity in the spirit and the second thing that happens to them is that they are graced to do exploits listen brothers and sisters this thing is not by might zechariah chapter 4 give it to us please and verse 6 it is not by might it is not by power it's by the spirit the empowerment of the spirit when you walk with the holy spirit he empowers you to represent him when you walk with the holy spirit he takes away fear from you your life no longer becomes a thing of fear this fear all around is a product of our thinking that all the results will come from us the bible says then he answered and spake unto me this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, unto Joshua Selman, unto Koinonia, saying, not by might. You won't build that house by might. You won't build it by power. No. Your CGPA will not change by might. Not by power. Reducing your prayer time will not change it. Throwing away your good friends will not change it. It is by the Spirit. The next time people ask you, how was this result? By the Spirit. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Koinonia, by the Spirit. His wisdom upon us, by the Spirit. Leadership, by the Spirit. The miracles tonight, by the Spirit. The impartation, by the Spirit. I have learned to walk with Him. I have learned to walk with Him. 
have learned to work closely with him he promised me listen the holy spirit never promised me money the holy spirit never promised me faith listen carefully the holy spirit never promised me title the holy spirit never promised me good clothes the holy spirit never promised me crowds the holy spirit never promised me ministry but he promised to be a representation of the presence of god and to empower me continually the only thing he promised me is still what he is keeping because every other thing the highest value a man can have on earth is to be anointed the highest value you can possess on earth is to sustain an ability to provide solutions that are supernatural hmm. yeah. where your word becomes his word the holy spirit has possessed me like a demon literally every part of me every part of me when i speak is his voice when i bless is his authority when i command it is his authority speaking it is based on this consciousness that we can gather people and say come bring your pain bring your burdens bring it there are people here sick there are people here saying apostle can my life change keep watching you are about to watch the biggest drama in your life how fast situations can change because of him man of god you need him businessman businesswoman you need him you don't need bottles of minerals you don't need a bigger container you need him and his wisdom are we together now i said it last week the key to working with him is communion fellowship fellowship whatever you bring to the stage of life is the product of your secret place with him you are not going to stand here and fake relationship with him no sir no sir many people do it and disgrace themselves whatever you bring to the stage of life is an effulgence of your secret place so when i stand here when i'm preparing to go for koinonia i imagine him just waiting happily i know he's here but he's also with me and as i enter while i'm coming those who come usually a protocol person follows me and as soon as we take this turn and i see people they just see me smiling they don't know why i'm smiling when i come here and i sit down here i'm just watching people and watching the testimonies in my mind i look around and sometimes the lord keeps showing me the visions of people's issues and then i am overjoyed you see me waiting i can't wait for worship team to finish singing do you know why because i want him to speak to you when he holds this mic through my hands and he speaks to you through my voice and commands situations and circumstances then you will watch them melt away ah you are amazing you are amazing Hello. 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 you are amazing night you will walk some of you as you are going you will see phone calls that should not enter listen every time you see anything unusual smile back to him and say my partner at work at work 
Shalabakotaya, my partner at work. You go back to that ministry, fire on the altar, my partner at work. You are lying down and sleeping, and a dream comes with a powerful idea. My partner working while I'm sleeping. Somebody calls you and says, Sorry, I, I used to work against you, but now I repent. Someone at the backside has been compelling him. Are we, are we together? Do you believe all that I've shared? Or are you just excited? I can't speak Hausa. The Holy Spirit does not speak English. I can't speak Yoruba. I can't speak this. No. No. Apostle, I am so weak. I am, I am like a non-entity. No problem. You are the exact candidate for partnership with him. So that at the end of it, the excellency of power may be of God and not of you. Rise up on your feet. Let's stop here. I want you to lift your voice in one minute and cry passionately and say Holy Spirit more than ever before more than ever before I want to walk with you lift your voice and pray Anoint me. That's your prayer tonight. Anoint me. Fresh anointing. Fresh fire. I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you. Doing wonders with you. Changing lives with you. Transforming destinies with you. Transforming destinies. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and Lamb of God, I worship you. Lamb of God, I worship you. Lamb of God, I Thank mm -hmm. you. 
But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head, regardless of what it has been in my life. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory. And the leaves are up of my head. Hello, Kim Madonna. Listen, there is a fresh impartation that is coming upon your life. An impartation is a transference of unction, it's a transference of possibilities, so that what was not in your life all of a sudden is activated in your life. What you have no business seeing in your life steps into your life and you begin to walk in those dimensions. Hallelujah. 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 Please lift your hands. We are going to be fast. Tonight, tonight's session is an impartation. Please, I want you to believe it. I don't know how else to convince you. There are things, graces and dimensions that we need in our lives, but we cannot access in ourselves. But if we believe them, if we believe them, if we believe them, we will see it. Hallelujah. The first impartation God is releasing tonight, and I want you to bring those people out. There is a strange grace I see for speed, and the Lord is saying I should stretch my hands. It's a dimension of the spirit. It's a year of triumph. God is bringing speed. Right now, I stretch my hands. Let it be now, inside and outside. Speed. 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 Shabo Sabarikata. Inside, outside, everywhere. Speed. Like fire. It's coming on your chest. It's coming on people's chest. I don't know why, but it's coming on people's chest. A strange mantle, grace for speed. An impartation of the anointing for speed. It's by the spirit. It's by the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing 27 people climbing ladders in the spirit. Let it be now. Let it be now. Now. The anointing of the spirit is locating those people. It's a new dimension. I'm seeing ascendance in the spirit. People rising. That's what I'm seeing. Rising. Climb that ladder. It's happening to you. There is an energy of the spirit that is taking men to this dimension. 27 people. Inside, outside, I'm seeing it happen by the Spirit. Men rising to new levels of possibilities. We may not have space to bring everybody out, but we just got them. Rise up, 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 rise up
rising, rising, rising from one dimension, one dimension, one dimension. Please, I want you to lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. My hands are shaking and the Lord is telling me that he wants to do an impartation of the healing anointing. Now listen, the healing anointing right now in the name of Jesus, it will come on your hands. It will come on your hands. It will come on your hands. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. The ministry of healing. Not just an emotional ministry, a real dimension laying hands on the sick by the influence of the Holy Ghost and watching dramatic miracles. 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 I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Yeah, I am. is all over me I'm under the shadow of your wings there are people here praying Lord prove to me that I'm called into the ministry the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on you now as a proof as I'm speaking you may not even know but that grace, that grace, that grace is a sign. It's a sign. It's a sign. It's a token. Right now, right now, it's coming on people. A sign. A token. A sign. A token. Many ladies, many ladies are experiencing this sign. A sign, a sign of his hand upon your life. He's giving you a sign beyond any shadow of doubt. I'm hearing in my spirit the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom the Lord is asking me to count four one two three four take it now let it be yours straight wisdom I'm seeing mantles falling mantles falling strange wisdom coming from heaven strange wisdom coming from heaven receive it right now supernatural wisdom supernatural wisdom supernatural wisdom Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me somebody who used to have dreams and everything you see will come to pass. But he stopped. Right now I'm seeing a grace for restoration coming upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. It's not a general prophecy. There are exact people that this is happening to a restoration. A restoration. A restoration. A restoration. A restoration. Malakato praska debeka shepratika sabraka daba laraba. Hallelujah. There is a grace. I feel like praying for students. There is a grace for academic excellence. Listen, it doesn't just happen. 
believe me it's not just about what you learn there is a grace there is a, an exact grace for this lord i pray right now in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands to your people as many oh god as will please you let this baptism of this unction for extraordinary understanding let it come upon them right now at the count of three receive it now one two three break it now please help them receive that grace right now is coming upon you extraordinary intelligence capacity to assimilate capacity to understand capacity to understand hallelujah hallelujah that fair lady that shared her testimony lift your hands i see an angel pouring something like fire on your head father in the name of jesus let us step into a level of extraordinary intelligence i don't know you but i release that grace upon you from today you a strange dimension of grace and intelligence in the name of jesus receive it right now by the power of the holy spirit receive it right now by the power of the holy spirit by the power of the holy spirit there is a grace for entrepreneurship creativity witty inventions in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing at least 43 people right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let it come on them oh god believe it let it come on them oh god let it come on them oh god in the name of jesus let it come on them oh god in the name of jesus let it come on them oh god in the name of jesus i stretch my hands now 43 i'm seeing a number 43 strange ideas coming on your spirit now strange ideas creative ideas strange ideas creative ideas receive it right now i want to pray for those in ministry there is always an unction for the next dimension i don't know where you are but you're going to begin to feel fire from your feet rising upwards that's the instruction god is giving me in the name of jesus lord i'm praying right now fresh fire fresh mantle let it begin to arise now you are in ministry in this place begin to receive it right now in the name of jesus receive it right now in the name of jesus receive it right now those in ministry help them strange fire i see strange fire rising from the feet rise on top from the feet rise on top from the feet please help them in the name of jesus can you carry the child so that he doesn't in the name of jesus strange fire revival fire supernatural unction supernatural unction supernatural unction supernatural unction hallelujah the lord is ministering to me about a group of people here that he wants to bring into intimacy with him there is a dimension of intimacy it will surprise you you will start finding out that you are going alone to go and sit in a place the holy spirit wants to reintroduce himself to certain people lord where are they where are they find them find them tonight find rest in them where are these men and women where are these men and women that you want to introduce yourself to shake it take it beyond church beyond church beyond church hallelujah ah! i'm seeing people here who will be 
burning for days like fire literal physical fire that will not stop you will go with it you will wake up with it it will continue there is an energizing of the spirit that is happening to people an energizing of the spirit happening to people is a fresh fire it's a fresh fire hallelujah if you came with anything that is a point of contact whether a document certificate whatever it is that is a point of contact whether you are inside or outside anything you can use I want you to lift it up so many things are happening to people in the realm of the spirit there's someone at the media stand the Lord is lifting that person to the next level I'm seeing someone in a vision down at the media stand stepping up let them enter oh god right now let them enter into that realm that dimension somebody at the media stand the lord is, is like an initiation into a dimension into a dimension hallelujah acts chapter 19 says handkerchiefs and aprons handkerchiefs and aprons i've explained to you the mystery behind these results no man can speak over your life and you just have results like that it, it doesn't happen that way i'm about to speak over your points of contact if you don't have anything you are the point of contact yourself are we together many of you will be surprised believe me believe me many of you will be surprised at the dramatic things that will happen we are talking about the holy spirit here we are not just talking about an anointed man we are talking about the holy spirit his anointing like a cloud comes to mantle certain aspects of your life and you see grace speaking for you grace speaking for you Lift it up, you can lift your hands. speak now in the name that is above all names i prophesy upon every point of contact you are using now let a a grace the power of performance that makes things to work i release it right now upon that instrument i release it upon your documents i release it upon your pictures i release it upon your certificates i release it upon your proposals hear me whatever you are agreeing for as a point of contact i give life to it now in the name of jesus christ and i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit a dimension of results you have never seen begin to see it now i speak to every cgpa that is down here hear my voice i speak as one sent by the lord i command you to arise now in the name of the lord jesus christ there are people who are supposed to graduate but as it is now it looks like they may not graduate i change it now in the name of the lord jesus christ 
I decree and declare where your helpers have passed you and ignored you I put an anointing on you that will compel them to bless you I put an anointing on you that will compel them to bless you listen everything that used to flow in your life and stopped mysteriously I opened the door for it to continue everyone here in business any kind of godly business I stretch my hands enter a level of rest now believe what I'm praying for you I bring you into a dimension of rest now every troubled family here all kinds of troubles from lack of finances to trouble to fight to quarrel in the name of Jesus I introduce an anointing to that family and I command let there be peace right now 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 every troubled family let there be peace right now there are people here who need divine direction as a matter of urgency i speak to you hear his voice and hear it clear hear his voice and hear it clear hear his voice and hear it clear in the name of jesus christ in dreams and visions may his will be made known to you in the name of jesus christ i command every manifestation of the spirit of fear fear of the unknown fear of the future uncertainties around your life that is making you do foolish things i command right now fear go in the name of jesus 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 every veil of disfavor that is around your life that makes things to work for others until it gets to your turn and then mysteriously when the breakthrough is almost coming you never see it i decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command that captivity to end now. I command that captivity to end now. Hear me. Everyone called jobless here. I stand in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I decree and declare, may your miracle job find you. Believe what you are hearing. May your miracle job find you. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray for anyone here having any infirmity. I don't care what it is. I don't care how long any stranger in your body a lady is going to shout now under the anointing and then the power of God for healing will touch people in the name of Jesus I command be healed now say amen be healed now be healed now be healed now every blood disease be healed now ulcers be healed now my grains be healed now every kind of abnormal condition in your body be healed now growths and lumps around the body whether breast lumps all kinds of lumps i command that they disappear right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i pray for your family in the name of jesus between now and the next seven days 
may you hear strange testimonies from home please believe me i say it again between now and the next seven days i stand in the name of the lord god of heaven and i command in the next seven days unusual testimonies unusual testimonies unusual testimonies unusual testimonies unusual testimonies it doesn't take time it takes his anointing everything that your hands have done and it did not work I stretch my hands to yours and I command from today become a proof producer I command today become a result producer become a result producer become a proof producer in the name of Jesus hear me Every pending issue over your life, every pending issue, any kind of pending issue right now, issues that have been hanging in the realm of the spirit and will not be resolved. I decree and declare, let an end come to those issues now. Let an end come to those issues now. Let an end come to those issues now. Every family here that has experienced delay as a family, not an individual alone, shake it here. There is unction upon me. The hand of God is upon me. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. The Lord is asking me to push families forward. I push you forward now. By the mystery of prophecy, I push you forward now. I push you forward now. Hear me. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever must show up in your life and lift you, and lift your mother, and lift your father and wipe your tears in the name of jesus i stand by the god of heaven whose i am and i decree and declare that between now and the next two weeks strange encounters strange encounters strange encounters with the gift of man strange encounters strange encounters mysterious coincidences that will lead to your breakthrough everything that has died in your hands and in your life hear the word of the lord i command it to come back to life now i want to pray please drop your hands just the brothers lift your hands i want to release upon you grace for establishment listen if you are wise you will pay attention to what i'm saying there is a grace that establishes men are we together now establishment is where you gain stability in life financially are we together relationally spiritually purposefully there are many men many church brothers the reason why many people are not in relationships the reason why many people cannot move forward in their life is because the devil has taken this aspect out of their lives so you find a godly brother but you are 35 years you are still begging for money you are still living in your parents house it's a cause lift your hands in the name of jesus i pray for every brother here the grace and the unction that turns weak men into great men the grace and the unction that establishes men financially ministerially career-wise 
and in purpose at the count of three in the name of jesus christ whose i am and whom i serve i decree and declare may that grace come upon you now one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now upon you i command that grace there is a gentleman outside that grace is coming upon him in a mighty way take that grace right now brothers receive it now in the name of jesus christ listen it is this grace that brings speed of establishment in your life help us come to support you to gain your footing in life it's not just by growing old there is a grace you don't have to pay for everything by yourself there is a grace that sends help the desire to your ministry establishment is a mystery in the spirit you can have a thing but when you are established you are you are well stabilized enough to now begin to be a blessing to others there are many people who are experiencing finances here but they are not established you are established means you can bless others without being affected established in wisdom your mind is developed so that you no longer act like a child two more prayers and we are done tonight the Lord is ministering to me the Lord is ministering to me that he wants to take away barrenness 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 it doesn't just mean physical barrenness alone unproductivity is a cause is the cause of hardship the classic sign that a man is carrying that demonic thing is barrenness in the name of Jesus I command your desert to become a fruitful vine in the name of Jesus I command your fruitful vine to become a forest I say it again in the name of Jesus I command your desert to be a fruitful vine I command your desert to be a fruitful vine in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah in one minute I want you to ask the Lord for any one thing I'm releasing my faith with you just one thing lift your voice and pray I'm releasing my faith with you please pray one minute ask the Lord and watch it happen I release my faith with you in the name of Jesus I release my faith with you ask the Lord don't say it is impossible we are talking about the God of heaven here we are talking about the spirit of the living God what you see is the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the spirit ask what you will and it be granted unto you by the spirit of God are you praying just one thing change my life just one thing give me laughter just one thing answer my marriage just one thing give me a child just one thing settle me financially just one thing multiply your grace on my life hallelujah whatever it is that you have asked the Lord I release my faith with you and I call it your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I release my faith with you and I call it your testimony listen the Bible says and whatsoever Adam called it that was the name thereof if it is called a testimony then it becomes a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ no matter how impossible it is may the God of all flesh the God of Jeshurun that rides upon the wings of the wind I pray that you will step into your life and give you dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah listen as you go back this night don't be careless meditate meditate 
on the things you have received and begin to walk conscious of it do you know many of you as a result of today's meeting you will literally start feeling the presence of the holy spirit like a presence walking literally literally i mean what i'm saying literally walking like someone walking you enter a room some of you you will feel it as wind some of you you will see that shadow a similitude of his presence you will begin to have encounters not demonic encounters encounters with his presence you will be sleeping hear me you will be sleeping and you will feel a physical touch a man will wake you you will be alone in the room yet you will hear a voice clear a real voice you will know that this is the spirit of god leading you in the name of jesus i activate that dimension begin to walk in the impulses of the spirit the voice of the spirit the touch of the spirit the feelings of the spirit i program your spirit man to understand the impulses of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ yes he will come to you he will come to you he will open your bible when you are sleeping you will wake up and see your bible open he will write notes and leave it physical notes on papers you will see it happen you will pray and he will come to your room like benny Hinn, it will be good morning holy spirit you will have similitudes of encounters with him you will sleep in the night and your whole night will be full of visions 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 encounters visions encounters visions hear me men will come and sit on your bed and start shaking under the anointing because something a deposit of eternity has followed you they will wear your clothes and the mantle will catch up with them they will wear your shoes they will eat in your place and you will carry strange fire in the name of jesus you will hear men call you and confess and tell you i'm sorry i'm the one who stole your laptop i'm sorry i'm the one who took this from you i'm sorry because of the presence of god listen bye this new dimension of encounter i command that you become untouchable untouchable by witches and wizards untouchable by accidents untouchable by bomb blasts untouchable by armed robbers in the name of jesus hear me quarter to shame your senior partner will arise for you no longer will people say where is your god your life will be an answer to that prophecy in the name of jesus christ listen there are some of you here what has happened to you tonight it will last for a long time the word of god the bible will open to you in a fresh way a way that you have never seen it a dimension that you have never seen hear me some of you after tonight god will start giving you instructions to go and pray for certain people don't be afraid you will go and you will watch miracles erupt signs and wonders erupt in the name of jesus christ hallelujah father i ask finally that everyone following online everyone following here inside and in any of the overflows everything that has made men mock god in your life i am agreeing with you from the depth of my heart i give you the next 13 days surprise them surprise them with the enviable results that will come from your life surprise your accusers surprise everyone who knew you in the name of jesus wave your hands to jesus listen 
this is how men are made in the kingdom products of transfers spiritual transfers spiritual deposits something that was not in your life coming upon your life and creating a scene in your life that was not there never act like you don't know how it came is by the spirit fellowship with the spirit fellowship with the spirit pray in the spirit and then you walk in those dimensions hallelujah thank you jesus for that which you have done tonight much more than these teachings oh god invade the life of your people and cause them to know you in the name of jesus christ keep standing if you can very quickly there are people here your first encounter with the holy spirit tonight is as a convictor he's convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment there are people here who listening to me overflow one two three online and right here there are people here who are saying man of god i don't like the way my life is and i want to come to jesus i want to run to him i want to start afresh please pay attention don't be busy let me have your attention this is a very important call there are others who are saying man of god i have responded to an altar call before but now i need to start afresh with god i don't know how things went haywire in my life but right now i'm running to him in the next two minutes if you belong to any of these categories the holy spirit is already convicting you i want you to run whether you are inside or outside run quickly come and stand here quickly the holy spirit is calling you are you coming quickly koinonia celebrate them if you are outside run 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 follow any of the doors and make your way inside quickly i didn't say walk please run our time is gone run like you are coming to receive an award run like your life is about to change don't be embarrassed don't be ashamed he's giving you a new beginning don't say they know me that's nobody's business this is an affair between you and the lover of your soul there are still more people to come are you ashamed or are you rushing to come are you ashamed or are you rushing to come don't act like you're not hearing his voice those outside make your way quickly quickly make your way join them if you're coming those of us here i salute you some of you are making this decision for the first time some of you have made this decision before and your life just scattered and you are getting back to him it doesn't matter what category if you are joining them please help this our mother she's joining them make your way quickly it doesn't matter what you have done he's giving you a new beginning when you stand here lift your right hand and say it sincerely and truthfully make sure that you are making a decision that is genuine not just an emotional decision say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you tonight i have heard your word i need the holy spirit in my life i ask you jesus to forgive me to cleanse me give me a new beginning from today i declare that my sins are forgiven i declare that the life of god is in me i'm a child of god the holy spirit lives in me in the name of jesus father i pray that you preserve these ones i decree and declare that guilt leaves your life i decree and declare that condemnation leaves your life from today the lord gives you a new beginning i supply grace for you to live a victorious christian life in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you now i want you to follow the lady waving her hands you're quite many just coordinate yourselves and quickly follow that lady they would have a word or two with you outside and require that you um you just do one or two things your life will change forever in jesus name koinonia let's honor god for them 
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.